Lovely boys. Hello and welcome to episode 73 of Chet and John's Reassuring You Finite Gaming Playlist. My name is Chet Roivers. With me, as usual, is John Denton. What's up? Uh, every week, John and I go through the 10 games we've been playing uh, over the past seven days. Um, but because some mug last week uh, caused us to miss the first show the first show ever, I think, the first uh, first gap in the whole time since we not started true. doing it. It's not true. You've got no memory. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's the first one we've missed. But anyway, uh, this week it's going to be a little bit longer. It's going to be the 15 games we've been playing over the past two weeks so the number 15s are the games we've played the least over the past two weeks and the number ones are the games we've played the most uh, that's it John redeem yourself boy number 15 Torchlight 2 just played a little bit of it just before the podcast because you've been very mean and made me do 15 this week two right stash two weeks whatever I was in another country All right. hating on a man anyway yeah. Uh, yeah Torchlight 2 is the game that I talked about a couple of weeks ago the Diablo deal i could say that but i've never played diablo i've only played this and uh, i played it for about 10 minutes just now and it's really good it's very simple you know what to do you just fucking click click the guys click the click the button to shoot your fucking better weapon run around if i had any clue about this genre i could uh, talk about it in detail and explain why it's good or break it down but i don't but all i know is it looks nice and it's quite good fun and it's making me think that I do like this genre a bit more than I ever thought I did, but I'm still not 100% convinced. All right, fair enough. Um, are you going to play? I mean, obviously, Diablo 3 is out in like a couple of weeks or a month, maybe, on consoles. Are you going to bother? Uh, no, not on consoles. I just play it on, on the PC if I was going to play it. Oh, of course, I forgot, yeah. Yeah, uh, but it's still really pricey, so I only buy things for like 4p on PC yeah. these days. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this was two, it was two quid. 174 or something. A, a, joke, a joke price. Yeah, true that. Um, okay. Uh, right, my number 15 is Fanny Granny's Great Escape on the Xbox 360. I've... Is this the one you played the other, is the one you played the other day, isn't yeah, it? Like that, th- yeah, like three or four weeks ago. Uh, and I liked it very much. It's a driving game in which you simply flip between three lanes, uh, and it's very simple, but it's it's very well made, and it's enjoyable. Uh, I actually went... I, I accessed it on from my dashboard by accident, uh, and as soon as it started, it said there was a patch for it, which I thought was a bit weird, so I downloaded the patch and then played the game again. It's just made it much easier. One of the things I liked about it was that it was really difficult, and the second you saw something in the back, you had to react really quickly. It was almost like one finger death punch. It was like bang, bang, bang. You had to really react fast. Right. Uh, I think I guess the creator must have had complaints about it because he's made it very very easy. It's still fun and I still recommend it. But um, and it's eighty Microsoft points, so you can't go wrong. But um, I kind of liked how difficult it was. But um, it's still good. Fanny Granny's Great Escape. <laughs> Fanny Granny's Great Escape. Check it out. It's good. Yeah, big time. Um, all right, my number fourteen is a game called Slap on uh, on the iPhone. Now the reason I played this game is I was on Reddit and. Um, some poor mug complained that his game Slap had been ripped off by some company um, who had just done a, like a, a complete lift of his game, redrawn the graphics and just stuck it on uh, iOS themselves. I'm pretty sure I got his game and not that one. I'm pretty sure I did. Uh, the game itself is Slaps, you know, Slaps. What, with hands? Yeah. With, yeah. That's so it. I thought, okay, that could be fun. And then it said uh, you need two players. And I just thought, well, that's fine, but why wouldn't you just play Slaps? If you had another person, yeah, it's way more fun. Yeah. So I played against myself for a bit, and it's quite funny. What the little hand gets redder and redder and redder, um, and you can dodge. It seems like a fun game, but it, if I got to play against AI, I, I mean, it's a fucking waste of time. Don't get me wrong, but if I played against AI, I would have killed you know ten minutes or something. But the fact you have to play against another human, I'd rather just beat the shit out of them, to be honest. Yeah, really. Um, I suppose if you're a phobic of pain, then it's probably quite. But good. really interested in the game of slaps. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> surely, surely only the person that made this game is that person. Did you pay? Do, uh, did no, you... I felt sorry for the guy, but then the game was free, so. Yeah, what's he? Quite, what's he going to have lost out on? A bit of exposure in the slapped hand market. I, I don't, don't know. Get... There's, it's one of those ones where you can, uh, you know, get rid of the ads for six or nine p or whatever. Oh, but... right, okay. I, I, mean, I felt bad for him because he'd obviously just been ripped off, but fuck knows why the other people even bothered. It's Reddit. He's probably making the whole thing up anyway. <laughs> <laughs> probably. But he had screenshots. Oh, OK. But right. someone someone got ripped off. Yeah. All right, OK. Well, that's, uh, um, maybe I'll check that out. Maybe. I don't. <laughs> just have a game of slaps. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
Um, okay, my number 14 is Arcade of Neon on the Xbox 360. It's another indie game. Um, I downloaded it months ago and I forgot it was there, so I just thought I'd get it out of the way. Um, it's it, it's a complete. It's a black screen. It's 80 Microsoft points. It's a black screen. You're a neon circle and you move around uh, in the background. You have to avoid other neon circles. If one of the same colour as you hits you, it's fine. If one of the other colours that's not you hits you, it's bad. So you only have three lives. All of the colours, it's uh, amber, green, blue and red. So they're mapped to the face button so you can change colour. And you just have to absorb these circles. You get three lives. That's it. Occasionally these... Um, Coloured stars fly in, which uh, give you extra lives, and you have to be the right colour. Uh, it's fine. There's different modes. There's one mode where you can't change colour, which is like really, really quite pain. Uh, the music is a horrible approximation of a hard trance anthem, and it's really off key. It's just like it's horrible. It's like it, it can't. It puts you right off. Um, uh, yeah, there's a, the, the best mode is instead of points for getting these circles, uh, it adds seconds to a clock that's on cu- countdown. I mean, it's it's just the simplest thing in the world. It's entertaining for about five minutes. Like all of these things, the fact that it doesn't have high score tables is the biggest enemy because the, the entertainment value that you could have would be setting a high score, which mm. is uh, uh, you can't do. So uh, Arcade of Neon, yeah. I mean, it's... it's bleh. Yeah, these these games sort of go in one ear and out the other sometimes. Too. Yeah, that was these that was one. Games. Yeah, yeah, that was that was completely disposable. All right, all right. Uh, my number thirteen, I guess it is, is uh, Breach and Clear on iPhone. Now, have you heard of this? I think it was on Eurogamer today, right? That's right. It is the uh, iOS turn-based strategy game from Robert Bowling. You know, the fucking former COG guy who went off to go and do his own thing. Yeah, and it's basically a turn-based strategy version of I'd say COD it's it's the same sort of jingoistic bollocks as COD but it is more like Rainbow Six because it's all about uh, layering up on doors and then breaching them so you make a little plan of action um, it, it, it handles quite nicely it handles kind of like XCOM and it's got uh, cover and all that sort of stuff and you know the, it, there's, it's really, there's loads of really complicated menus beforehand and you can customise all your guns to ridiculous levels and that's where microtransactions come in all that shit that made no sense to me. I didn't even bother listening to it. But the actual game itself is okay, and I like the idea. Um, you sort of line up on a stack up on a door. That's what it says. Stack up on the door, and then go through your four men. They've got their different classes, usual shit. And then you can kind of tap on them, tap where you want them to end up in this room. The whole thing's kind of done from an isometric, very, very XCOM-y. You can spin it, you can zoom it, all that stuff. But what I didn't like about it is that you're turn-based, but the enemies aren't. So they will react. It's not like you go in and then that's the end of the turn, and then the enemies have their turn. They're constantly like, moving? Uh, no, they only move during your turn, if that makes any sense. So, okay. so you, you, you like go to execute, you, you set everything up, and you press like execute, whatever the button is, and all you guys move, and then the enemies will move in real time, then they'll have battles like that, but it kind of eliminated the strategy for me, because, I don't know, I wanted it to just be in like a normal turn-based game where I could actually try and outthink people, but it seems to just be about... Uh, how you're going to line up on doors and which guys you're going to use in which areas, and ultimately, it just it it kind of didn't do it for me very quickly, and none of the other stuff about the game was good enough to make me pull through. It was very boring. Everything else about it was very, very boring. Very COD, not even like as fun as COD. Just just like fucking old Rainbow Six type of boring, and yeah, it, it, it just kind of left me cold, unfortunately, because I thought the idea was great. If it was XCOM, but you know, cheap and done with normal soldiers and whatever. I was like, yeah, I'm down for that. But as it is, yeah, just didn't really get it, and it wasn't fun, and I didn't like it. Okay, uh, you can't argue with that. Um, what the hell was the deal with Robert Bowling? I thought he was a community manager that somehow became synonymous because he. I, I don't. Know, is he a developer? Was he ever? Yeah, I think he started as a community manager when they community managers didn't really exist, and then became like lead strategist on. I think maybe Modern Warfare 3. Oh, well. So I think it was like he was sort of head of media and involved in the production. Then he left to go and do his own company. Uh, did a Kickstarter, I believe, which failed. I think this is right. You know me, I'm always good with facts. Yeah. And then and then maybe formed another company or had a side project and this, this game was from him. But I still don't think he's a programmer or anything like that. I think he's more like a an ideas man. Okay. All right, we'll get or to if him. the idea is... Stick soldiers in a room. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm sure it'll be profitable anyway. Um, it, was, it was a mug 50 I spent on that shit. <laughs> oh, okay. 
All right. Um, okay, well, my number 13 is a game called... Well, it's called Jetpack Ninja Quest if you search for it in the iOS. It's an iOS game. If you search for it in the App Store, that's what it's called. But the game is actually called A Ninja Flying with a Jetpack, a Jetpack colon... A Sonic Boom Run. Uh, this was <laughs> this was recommended by uh, Joypod host David Turner. Uh, I think because I might have mentioned its creator a few weeks ago, because they always talk about this guy, this Chinese developer who uses terrible English and stuff and whatever. Um, it's absolutely diabolically poor. It's a vertically scrolling shooter. You have to hold like all the cave ports and whatnot. You have to hold the screen to move the uh, um, move the little guy. Um, sometimes the thing is. He's, you have to shoot all the time. There are a lot of enemies, so you have to shoot all the time. Sometimes when you hold him, uh, he shoots, and then sometimes he doesn't. What you want to do is to have him shoot all the time. Mm. But then you do that and you run out of ammo. And ammo only appears in these uh, oil drums, I think that's what it was, and you always shoot them because they look exactly the same as the enemies and they've run, come at you really fast. Um, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's fucking terrible. The enemy fire is really difficult to see, um, and it moves really fast, so you get hit a lot anyway. But after about two minutes, the brilliant enemy turns up, which the fire, when it shoots at you, the fire is the same colour and moves at the same t- same speed as the looping background animation of space. So you, <laughs> you almost literally can't see it. Uh, those guys are my special boys. Uh, yeah, I mean, god damn, it's terrible. Jetpack Ninja que- Quest stroke, a ninja flying with a jetpack col- colon, a sonic boom rum. It's, I mean, it's, yeah, it, it was supposed to be terrible, and it is. I just wish I had more to say about it. No, I don't change the subject. It's is shit. it the same people that made that zombies plants thing? No, it's not. It's a Chinese guy. I can't remember his name. Um, no, I actually downloaded a load of his, so I mean, I might look at them if they're worth talking about in future. But um, mm. yeah, I mean, it's just, it's, it's really fucking crap. It just doesn't work. It's bollocks. Stay away. Yeah, I, I, I'm not touching that shit, although the name's good. Hmm. Hmm. Mm, my number 13 <laughs> is my number 12. I don't know. There's too many in this list. Yeah. Uh, Letterpress, the game Letterpress. The reason I played this was actually listening to Joypod, and they uh, they were banging on about it, and I knew I needed more games. Uh, you played Letterpress before? I don't think I have. No. It's the one that's the combination of kind of boggly shit, and I guess in a really, really, really basic way, risk in that you have to control the board. So you try and make uh, a letter. God, this is I played this fucking two weeks ago. I'm trying to remember now. You try and make a word. You're playing one on one against someone online, turn based, and with the, like a square grid of letters, that sort of shit. And then if you get that, then you'll colour in that area. Of, say blue. It's blue versus red. And then they have to try and make a word, and they can use the letters that you've used. And then if they get it, it will turn that area red and stuff. So you're basically trying to take over as much of the board as possible, and you can eat chunks of their colour out so say they make a word but you make a word with letters within that word okay. does that make sense yeah. so you, then you can start reclaiming the territory it's, it's really good I can see what it's got why it's got a massive following um, people fucking love it I think it's free as well uh, it, yeah it's, it's very good I kind of played it for a bit and then forgot I had it on my phone and then just noticed it about an hour before the podcast and I was like oh fuck yeah I forgot I played that so uh, yeah letter press but I'm, I'm far from an expert I'm, I'm really quite considering what I've done for most of my all of my career I'm pretty bad at letter games yeah okay um, well that does sound alright I think yeah I do. you like it you like all that shit yeah true letter press I mean, it's on iOS obviously I see yeah you, I'm pretty sure it's a freebie yeah okay I'm pretty sure although it might not be alright okay well, I, will, I will look into that um, okay, my number 12 is another Xbox Live indie game. It is called Gory Wild West. Um, it's, fa- What's this about, then? it's fairly new. Um, I won't spend very long talking about it because it's incredibly simple. It's very crudely animated, but quite endearingly so. It's cyberpunk, but in this sort of Wild West setting, and it's all in black and white, and it's... Uh, you you say it is crude, but there is something. It, I did quite like the way it looked. Um, two guys shuffle towards each other from opposite sides of the screen. They stop in front of each other. A triangle comes up on the guy on the right, which says, I think it says something like "Wait for it." When that disappears, you press the trigger. It's, just, it's like a, a duel. Okay. With two guys in a cyberpunk Wild West setting. The best thing about it is that your guy's name is uh, Heroic Harry, and the first guy you face off against is called Lawless Larry. Um, oh, that's nice. about exactly that's that, that's as good as the game gets. You literally you wait for something to appear and then you press a trigger. Eighty Microsoft points. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't bother if it was a mini game inside another game, perhaps. But on its own, yeah. it's just it's just almost literally nothing. Is it? Do they come thick and fast, or is it literally like no? One? They, they uh, come up. There's a they, there's they comes up with like a uh, text, like they speak to you first, and it's supposed to be funny, but funny in a kind of way where I think perhaps it was written by a child. 
Right. Um, just just because you just it's kind of just like oh, you know you want to tell them to shut up. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's gory Wild West. You can totally discern what it is from the trial if you're interested. But uh, why are you? Yeah, sorry. For some reason, I just had a flash of the man who sat on the bus today. This fucking gamer who was probably about twenty stone. Uh, his hair was lank and greasy, like nothing I've ever seen. He was wearing flip flops, and his toenail was dark, bleeding red, and he <laughs> smelled like the bottom of a rubbish bin. I mean, to the point where I thought someone had just brought their rubbish on the bus, and then I turned around and saw this guy, and he'd bought Skyrim secondhand, and he was opening it and talking to the instruction manual. And that's when I decided that I really need to pass my driving test. <laughs> what was he saying to the fucking instructions? I couldn't, he wasn't saying it. He was, like, whispering. <laughs> he was just whispering at the instructions, and then I kept the receipt inside his box. He stank so badly. I, it was unbelievable. Wow, um, I don't understand that. That that's like their target market. Why is he only playing Skyrim now? I know that's actually what I thought on the bus when, <laughs> <laughs> in between very short breaths. <laughs> okay, well, uh, yeah. I don't know why that jumped into my head when you were talking about that. I think it's because you said it was written by a child, and I had visions of it either being a child or or someone like that. Oh, right. but yeah. Anyway, yeah, it's fucking hell, it made me, it's making me wretched even thinking about it. <laughs> uh, right, my number eleven. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Mario Kart 3DS now if you hadn't made me do 15 I wouldn't have talked about this because I do play it every now and then without talking about it but um, I was bored in the airport on the way back from Sweden and decided to have a Grand Prix on Mario Kart 3DS and I thought this was going rather well and then on the very last corner of the very last race I got hit with a blue shell and ended up coming second in the Grand Prix and then I grabbed my 3DS and I bit it as hard as I could in front of an airport of people trying to, <laughs> waiting to get on a plane that's the only story I have about Mario Kart 3DS I have nothing else to add about the game but it's amazing that it still manages to do that almost every single time <laughs> well I take it that wasn't a person that was the AI it was, you weren't playing online no 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 yeah no just the AI I'm just trying to get all the golds very slowly on the on the fastest on the 150cc right, all the gold things mm. whenever I whenever I have a spare 20 minutes or something. Okay, good but tactic. Yeah, biteage. Biteage indeed. Um, okay, right, my number 11 is a game called Blood Mask on uh, Mask M A S Q U E. Uh, it's an iOS game. My girlfriend told me about it. My girlfriend is a huge iOS gamer and she's she's got her finger on the pulse as far as that stuff goes and she told me about it like it was the second coming and it's a fairly big deal, I think. It's a Square Enix game. Uh, it's five pounds, and she said it's the most she's ever bought up front for a game. Um, it's it's a fighting game that has kind of RPG elements to it. You, you sort of the game itself, you're moving through these environments, and it's 3D. It's on the Unreal Engine, uh, oh. and it looks actually really impressive on an iPad. Uh, and you get missions off people, and those missions involve having a fight. Um, the XP is blood, and you basically you have it's kind of like. You fight with other people, other players, but not live. So you, you can sign up to certain clans, and then so she'll have people, she'll fight with them, and then she can have them in a roster of uh, regular people that she fights okay. with. They are actual people. And then when they fight with her, their stats go up, and vice versa. And then you can donate blood to people on your squad if you want to get their XP up faster and stuff like that. It's quite nice. It's a very sort of uh, nice community. I saw that people had given her stuff, and like she was giving stuff to them. I was like, that's really nice. There's a nice little community already. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you're walking around these environments, you get missions, and then it's a fighting game, and it just involves tapping and sort of QTEs, basically. But it's it's quite quite entertaining. Um, the fact that it's five pounds, I think. I mean, it's difficult. It should mean that there's no microtransactions. Apparently, she hasn't. But she said they come up now and again and say, "Do you want to purchase this?" And she always says no. But I kind of feel that if you're spending five quid in a game. You shouldn't have in-app purchases in it, but it must, if you're if you're if you're putting it out there, you might just think we might as well. You know, it's it yeah. must, it's, it's it's a fucking shame. I mean, you uh, from what my girlfriend said, you get more than what you pay for with the five pounds, uh, and it's not aggressive in the slightest. But still, I, I thought that was a little bit much, and it's really it's, I mean it's simple, um, but it's surprisingly Morris, and she's completely hooked on it. I almost forgot to mention the best thing about it is the face mapping. I've never seen it done as well as it's been done in this game. You take three uh, different poses from three different angles and then it maps it onto this character. Uh, and it's quite uncanny. Really? They, they implement you into the cutscenes. I'm watching my girlfriend have all these sort of like, you know, in the cutscenes and then showing her jump, jumping around with this sword and stuff. It's like, it was several double takes. I was like, that looks amazing. 
Oh, shit. Um, that's how she heard about it, incidentally. She's like, it sounds so cool. So she, it was a bonus that the game's actually uh, as good as it is. Um, yeah, uh, it involves money up front, but it's... It's, it's, I was surprised by how good it is. I don't think I'd play it myself because if it's going to be a fighting game, I'd be you know I'd rather it was a bit more sophisticated. But yeah, uh, uh, yeah Blood Mask. You just played on her hers, did you? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I just, okay. I, she insisted I play, it, and I did actually get into it. So um, I'd actually kind of recommend it. I mean, she like she loved that. Um, you know, the I, I think you played it, the iOS version of uh, uh, fuck Superman versus Batman. Oh, injustice. Get, injustice. Yeah. Oh. Uh, did you play that? Yeah, I did. I talked about it on here, but I thought it was she. Yeah, it's similar to. I mean, apparently it involves the same sort of gestures and stuff, stuff right. like that. But um, I quite liked it, um, so I thought it was quite good, and it looks incredible for an iPad game. So yeah, Blood Mask. I thought it was pretty, pretty impressive, really. So my iPad won't run that shit, unfortunately. Oh damn! Nor we, nor we yours. I wouldn't have thought. Why you not? Got the, you got the old school, didn't you? No, I've got the the, the most recent. Oh, have you? Yeah. Oh, look at you! It's when my girlfriend's a nutter. She, it was a gift. Fucking hell! Yeah, she's around the twist. Blimey. Do you yeah. remember that programme? Anyway, yeah. we're not that type of podcast. Right, um, my number... Well, I don't even know what we're on anymore. Ten? Number 10? Yeah. I should just write numbers down. That's my new thing. No, I don't. Anyway, my number 10 is... I'm going to call it Sonic Racing, because I can't remember what it's called. The new Sonic Racing game that everyone said was good. It was in Steam sale for a bluey, so I bought it, and it is good. I haven't played that much of it, but uh, it's it's really nice. It looks nice. It moves nice. Whether it has the depth or the kind of Moorishness of Mario Kart, I haven't got a clue yet because I haven't played enough of it, but I'm certainly impressed by what I've played so far. Have you done the level where uh, I think it's the space, not the space Harrier, the Harrier? Harrier? When you're flying around on, off, off Harrier, what, what, Afterburner, that was it. The Afterburner themed level? No, I haven't done that yet. That is the business. I mean, it's is all it? about modifying how you play going from boats to cars to to planes it's really i mean it's both of those sonic racing games are surprisingly good um excellent in fact that that most recent one is absolutely superb are you going to play it anymore yeah definitely yeah i I mean i'd been wait i'd actually wanted to get it on wii u for ages but it kept it was i couldn't find it for less than like 30 odd quid but then when i saw it for i think it's four maybe 490 or four or or something you know fiver yeah on steam i was like yeah all day all day i'll take that um, but yeah, I just didn't have time to put in any, and I bought a bunch of stuff and that was kind of low priority compared to some of the other stuff that I wanted to play. But yeah, I have it there. Yeah, I will play it definitely. All right, cool. Cool beans. It's, um, yes, yeah, it's, it's pretty damn good. Yeah. It looks nice as well. Fucking yeah, it, it looks lovely on PC. Yeah. Wait until you see, I mean, the, the best looking level, one of the best looking levels I've seen on, on uh, of anything actually on a 360 is that afterburner level. It's incredible. Really? And it runs at so, it's so fast. Yeah. Um, Technically amazing, that is. Yeah, I, I might stick that. it on after this, actually, because, yeah, yeah I for, again, I've for, kind of forgotten I'd, I'd played it because this was eight years ago now. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it, it does seem cool. It is. It's good. Very good. Um, okay, my number 10 is, uh, doesn't have a, well, it's called Untitled, but I assume it just doesn't have a title. It's the latest project from Stephen Lavelle, a.k.a. Ink Repair, who I've spoken about before, who was, mm-hmm. well, we both spoke about his recent game, Slave of God. Um, and innumerable other projects. Uh, he, I'm very comfortable, and I'm prone to referring to his stuff as art games, not because they self-consciously pursue a meaning or they contain any commentary on anything. It's just because they're pure self-expression. Uh, self-expression. Um, and you know, he's also a wind-up motion because the last game of his I spoke about, which was Songs of Travel, you draw something and then puke on it. So I don't, you know. It, if you're if you're sort of searching his stuff, trying to find something especially high-minded, I think you're a bit of a, a bit of a buffoon. Um, but this is a this is an interesting one. It's it starts and it's top down and it's kind of Atari. It looks like an Atari. Well, it like slightly better than Atari. It kind of looks like Minecraft but virus ravaged. So it's all sort of rough edges and stuff okay. like that. You basically you're dro- dro- driving around in this massive sausage and you have to pick up friends. <laughs> Sorry, you my surprise. You have to pick up your friends from their houses uh, by driving the sausage into the living room. They jump on and then you carry on. Um, and then so you really. yeah, you go into town to buy some underwear. Um, then you pick them all up, fly over a bridge, and then it morphs into a driving game that's sort of rendered in that same Slave of God, but black and white, so it's right. really quite a head fuck. Mm. And it's a driving game, so you're driving the car, and then bang, uh, as soon as that's finished, uh, those 2D pixel art characters are in a 3D land, and you're moving. Basically, it, it was pointless me explaining it. There may or may not be a conversation about how the world is made of oil, and there may or may not it may or may not end with Earth turning into a flesh-coloured meteorite and raining underwear into space. There's no <laughs> point in me reiterating any of this stuff because I just think you should go and play it. Um, 
yes, yeah, so I, I, I have. I keep, people have asked me about. It and I said I, I keep calling it an art game, but I don't think you should look for meaning in it. I just think it's just pure. Yeah, as I said, pure self-expression. I, it's just I enjoyed thirty minutes or so spending it in the mind of a very, very odd person. Uh, mm. I don't think you should look for anything beyond that. And it's a, it's a half an hour well spent. I reckon it yeah, doesn't have that a sounds, It sounds good. It's his <laughs> it sounds... most. It's his, it's at the top of his page because it's his most recent. It just says untitled. So. Um, it's interesting. We always, as always, with his stuff, read through the comments because some of the theories and ideas that people discuss about what it could be about in inverted commas are well, pretty mental, mm. uh, I think. But yeah, I enjoyed it. Half an hour of uh, confusion and the sort of laughs and stuff, and just weirdness and deliberately weak, wonky controls. I mean, it's just it's just a head fuck, but a very very pleasurable one. Is it? Can I? Well, am I going to be able to hack it? Because I couldn't hack Slave of God at all. No, no. The only really visually oppressive stuff is in that car, and that lasts for all of about fifteen seconds max. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. No, I'll play that then. Oh, good. Yeah, you should. It's uh, it's it's worth a look. And anything yeah, that can, good. any computer can run it. It's, it's basic as, right, as hell. sweet. Sweet. Um, my number nine. Number nine. Fucking hell. Yeah. Just do your job, John. Is um, Little Inferno uh, again? Just trying to scramble for stuff to play on the on my Steam account just to fill up the list. But um, yeah, thankfully it did save. I don't know. You won't. Nobody will remember. But I was worried that when I played it last, uh, I turned it off and it didn't save. It did save. I don't, why did I even mention that? <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, it's it's the more I play of it, the better it gets. I think that ev- everybody said that really. Um, if for people that that might not know the game, if they didn't hear it before, it's the one from the people that made uh, World of Goo. And all it is is a fireplace, and you can buy items and burn them, but they'll react in funny ways, and you can kind of chain it up. Then coins will drop, get you more money to buy more stuff, but it all happens really, really fast. But there's this really sinister, black, blackly comic edge to it, which is getting more and more sinister the more I play, and it's sort of slowly unveiling this kind of interesting story about the world being in like a perma- permanent winter, and um, it kind of has an almost like fallouty vibe to it the kind of satirical almost like you know the adverts in robocop as well especially the one for the game the oh, yeah, yeah. the game yeah there's yeah. there's kind of that vibe to it as well um i'd be far more informed to talk about it about any of this kind of stuff when i when i do finish it which i now will now i know it's safe that's the reason i brought that up anyway um i will go and, and play the whole thing because it's really it's fun to play and it's uh, bottom line is really satisfying just to burn the things it's done really well the fire's really nice the sound's really good and you never know what's going to happen uh, how the things are going to react when you pop them in like people have talked about the school bus that you pop in which looks like a toy but then it's just screaming burning children which is uh yeah shocking but but, but kind of funny as well in it's very it's very dark humor but um, yeah, I'd, it's very good. At, for, it was part of that humble bundle, yeah. which is uh, I wouldn't have paid. I said this before, but I was glad I didn't pay twelve quid for it on Wii U when the Wii U first came out. But for effectively fuck all, it's uh, it's a must-have, really. I think, even though it's fairly simple. Yeah, I'll have to play it at some point because I've heard way too much about it. Um, the, Nintendo uh, seemed to be a little bit, uh, you know, it, it wouldn't. It's not beyond the realms of possibility that that might be on a sale on the Wii U shortly um, because the mm. last time I've turned the Wii U on which was fucking ages ago admittedly there was stuff that was uh, that was discounted quite heavily uh, so I'll probably wait for the Wii U version just because I don't have a PC and I want an excuse to turn my Wii U on uh, yes but yeah that sounds alright um, no it's cool it's very cool I like that company as well because World of Goo was the shit Oh yeah, I forgot it was made by yeah. World of World of Goo really was the show. Yeah, tomorrow I think tomorrow com, tomorrow company tomorrow corporation. Okay. The, yeah, that's what they're called. Anyway, um, okay. My number nine is Baby Maker Extreme Two on the Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty. It is an indie game uh, recommended by listener and sometime Joypod contributor Matt Murray. Um, it's a really good shout because I I'd been meaning to pick it up for ages because I found out after Mount Your Friends came out that this was made by the Daniel Steger the same guy oh, right. so it's from the maker of Mount Your Friends which should you know that's a recommendation uh, you're, you're in the hospital you hammer B like mad and once this countdown is complete a lady gives birth and fires a baby off down the corridor of the hospital um, and there's a randomly generated selection of injured people on waiting area and tables and doctors and stuff you have two moves and you can only pull them off one at a t- you only have one of each so you can dive very fast, or you can rise up, sort of a mid-air jump. Right. Uh, once you've used them, that's it. 
the only re the only way you can get those moves back is if you hit something that's tinged with this sort of turquoise light. So intermittently, every like five things or sort of three, you know, it, at random, they're sort of they've got these turquoise light around them. Right. When you hit them, you bounce back up and you get the two moves back. So it's just sustaining it as long. It's like an endless runner, more or less. You have to sort of sustain it for as long as you can, mm -hmm. and just using the the two moves at the right time. It's very very simple. Um, it's just like hitting the right spot to earn a collectible every time because you have to bounce. You know, it, once you work out how the baby moves through the air and uh, how it moves at certain speeds and stuff, it's you can really keep it going for a really long time. And it's really, uh, it's a surprisingly taut um, game just in terms of its controls. It's funny as well. Needless to say, there's all sorts of sort of arcane and weird costumes and hats and you know, bait for your baby. You can have. You can even have your av avatar bouncing down, although not naked. Uh, you have to be wearing the clothes that you're wearing. Uh, it's eighty Microsoft points. Again, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but it's so terrible that they can't have leaderboards because this is mm. this is this is the best things on Xbox Live indie games. That's they're all score sack games, and this is another example. Uh, after you've come out of the hospital, you go through the town, you end up in a mall, and it gets weirder than that uh, afterwards. Um, it's eighty Microsoft points. I highly recommend it. It's not you know well, it's not in the same uh, breathing spaces, mount your friends. But what the fuck is? Yeah, indeed. That sounds good. That really sounds good. really good. It yeah, it sounds fun. I don't but know. Yeah, the, the no leaderboard thing's a killer because as you were talking about it, I was thinking, yeah, high school, high school action. Yeah, um, I can't vouch. Incidentally, I've got baby. It's Baby Maker Extreme Two that I played. I don't know how the first one measures up, so I can't say. But yeah, I, 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 I I'll talk about leaderboards on Xbox Live Indie Games uh, in a minute. So yeah. all right, okay. Uh, my number nine, nine, eight? nine. Jesus. Sorry, sorry, everyone. Is uh, Binding of Isaac on PC or well, in fact on Mac? Uh, killing time again on my travels. Um, such a good game to kill time with, and I'd forgotten that it's due out. It's due out this summer. It is summer now yeah. on on consoles. So I haven't heard anything about it for ages. But um, I haven't played it for ages either, and it was really good to go back to it. I, I think this game cost me thirty p, and the amount of hours that I played it for, it's got to be one of the highest value propositions I've ever had in gaming. Yeah, I mean, I've got to put in over twenty, twenty five hours into it. It's just a fucking classic. There's no two ways about it. It is a classic game. Um, you know all about it. I've talked about it plenty. Yeah, randomly generated roguelike type thing. Don't know what roguelike means really, but that's what people call it. It's uh, the equivalent of a twin stick shooter. Uh, the items that you get to level up Isaac are just consistently brilliant and you end up with this like completely Frankenstein uh, morphed up Isaac by the time you get deeper and deeper with like fucking coat hanger sticking out of his head and it's just it completely changes the way the game plays uh, the bosses are brilliant there's basically nothing bad to say about it the more you play you start to learn these little secrets it's a fucking classic I can't believe how much I got it for and I'll happily pay for it again when it does come out on console with all new content and new enemies and new new gleam yeah I mean I'm looking forward to that it, the fact that they haven't said anything about it could that mean that they're going to wait for the new set of consoles maybe I don't know I mean I thought it was a done deal but if you can now self-publish on both um, which seems to be what's happening then they, they might well but then again the user base is so much bigger and will be so much bigger for so long on 360 mm. that it would still make sense to put it on that, I think. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, it's probably just coming out. It just didn't make Summer of Arcade, and it'll be out in August or something. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if you're looking at stats, for if you want to try and get a sort of discern how well your thing's going to sell on Arcade, the stats would be skewed by the last few months in which some of the worst Arcade games has ever been have come out. And I bet that, like Scourge Outbreak, it wouldn't mm. surprise me if it didn't sell one. And there was another game that I played again. Wouldn't surprise me if it didn't sell one copy. Um, so maybe they're hoping sort of to hedge their bets. And uh, I don't know. I don't have a fucking clue. I don't know why I mentioned it. I know what you mean, though. I All mean right. this that that in the last year. And I don't know if this is me a skewed perception on my point because I have a PC now. But that world at the moment just seems to be you just play it on PC, especially when yeah. like for the price of one XBLA game, like a twelve hundred point. I think even on this list, I've picked up like four or five games in total for that price. You just can't beat that. And they, they, these are games that have been only out, you know, less than a year. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. All right. Okay, my number eight is a game called Unearthed, The Trail of Ibn Battuta on the PlayStation 3. Uh, Hold on, you're going to have to say that again. Why? You might as well have said that in Swahili. What was that? Oh, do you did what? Because you didn't understand it? Or yeah, yeah. All right. Unearthed, colon, The Trail of Ibn Battuta. Oh, is this the fucking Uncharted thing that yeah. you talked about? Okay, yeah. sorry. What, did I tell you about it already? 
Yeah, yeah, a couple of weeks ago. Did I? I can't. Yeah. Oh, oh no, it was, that's right. Because some uh, a listener recommended. Oh, it didn't recommend it. They suggested we play it. I like to think it wasn't a recommendation. Um, have you ever <laughs> Have you ever heard of Ibn Battuta? Is this a real person? Yeah, he's a famous Moroccan explorer. I didn't know this. I googled it just just right. because the, the game seems to suggest that he was somebody 14th century ages ago. Uh, he's buried in Tangier, so head over there if you want to hear what it sounds like to hear a man spinning in his grave. <laughs> um, the, as soon as you download, I downloaded the demo. This is not a, a, a critique on the whole game. I downloaded the demo. Uh, as soon as you put the cursor on the thing, you know, it changes the desktop of the PlayStation. Yeah. Uh, it's like there's sun coming through the window and there's binoculars and mugs and pictures of art. It's, it's uncharted. I mean, yeah. It's, uh, the music even is uncharted. It starts up, and the first thing that happens is that what I think is the, the launch trailer plays, uh, and it's encoded. It's really badly encoded, really low res, and an un- unbelievably skittish frame rate. And it looks like the worst game you've ever seen. There's a car accident. Yeah, it's, it's fast paced to try and make it look like there's loads of action, but the car accident looks like two boxes falling over. There's an explosion that looks like it's rendered in the fucking. I mean, it, it looks unbelievably poor. And then the game starts. And it it's, starts out, and it's kind of moody. You're on this boat, there's loads of red sirens going off. There's a voiceover saying, you know, basically, I'm fucked, I'm a dying man, I had to like, get into this situation. Uh, and you're there holding your wounds, walking around. It's a third-person action game. It's mimics Uncharted, obviously. Mm. And you're walking around this boat, uh, and it's... I wouldn't say it's surprisingly dark, but it is supposed to be like this guy's about to die. And... All of these uh, enemies are coming, you have to shoot them, and every time you shoot them, completely destroying any sense of atmosphere there is, your character goes things like, bullseye! Or he goes, oh yeah! (laughs) So it's just like, what is this? It's supposed to be dark and moody and stuff, and it's just he goes and ruins it. The the red (laughs) pointers which come up that are supposed to indicate where you're being shot from, they're all over the shop. So on two occasions, I being shot from the front and I'm like where the fuck I can't, is it behind the scenery I can't see it and then I drop dead guy was behind me so you can't pay attention to that at all uh, so I, sh- I walk through it holding my wounds I'm dying I shoot a load of guys and then I, a guy jumps out right in front of me and then whoosh, it, the perspective changes two energy bars appear on the top left and top right of the screen it turns into a fighting game this the, sounds amazing no, it's the worst fighting game that's <laughs> yes. ever happened I mean literally the worst fighting game I've ever played in my life the worst <laughs> There's an input delay of almost a full second <laughs> on every single attack. For some reason, they put all the buttons on the, uh, on the shoulder button. So it's punch, punch, kick, kick, and there's a, a block. Uh, and all one second. Uh, uh, and you just... I got completely decked. I had no health left. The other guy had, like, three quarters of his health bar left. And all of the attacks deal random damage. So I just kicked him, and then... Uh, and that took three quarters of his health bar away, and then I'd won the fight, and that was that. Absolutely fucking shocking. Okay, after that, it goes back, you know, the voiceover comes up and says, oh, and here's how I got here. So it goes back to the beginning of the story. And it's this character who's supposed to be, um, uh, 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 like, he's a Nathan Drake clone. He's talking to this woman who's apparently his partner. Uh, they, They go on these expeditions together. Although she's always kept waiting in the car. She has more knowledge and she's a young woman and she seems to be (laughs) as impassioned and uh, sort of in love with this as he is. Uh, But she's always, uh, she has to sit in the car and wait for (laughs) it. This is an Arabian game, right? Yeah, where's it from? It's like the first... Yeah, it's a Saudi Arabian studio. Okay, uh, I'll uh, say no more on that on that on that matter. Then I'll just I, leave it there. <laughs> I know it's their first game, and I know they're from Saudi Arabia, but that's about all I know. Um, the first when it's when you know it says the voiceover. Here's how we got into the situation. It's those two standing by a car, and I think what they tried to do is because they realised they didn't have the budget to motion cap actors. Mm. They've animated it. They've over animated it to make it look like they have. But it's so badly done that I mean, it's just—it looks like drunk people sign language. Like everything that you're talking about, it's like their arms going everywhere. It looks ridiculous, and it just makes it look like the cheapest, shittest game of all time. But there's arms waving all over the place while they're having this really sort of laid-back conversation about God knows what. They drive up this mountain, and he ducks his—you head. know—she's left in the car. He ducks his head under a wall, past a bush, and then all of a sudden, there's a massive fucking temple there. Um, he's, she's seemingly in the game just to speak to you over the radio. So you've got a headpiece right. on and you talk. 
And uh, he's an absolutely unbelievable twat. Um, <laughs> so she's as fanatical as him and impassionate about what they're doing as he is. But obviously she's waiting outside. Um, he, he walks into this, this um, temple and he's like, oh my God, you would not believe what I'm seeing. It's so beautiful. And she's there going, tell me, what can you see? And he goes, only risk takers get to see such beauty. I wouldn't say you're a fucking cunt. I mean, honestly, <laughs> their exchanges, <laughs> the exchanges between those two are unbelievable. I'm just like, who, what, what kind of fucking idiot thinks that he's a likable character? Anyway, you walk into this um, temple. There's a, a massive fountain in the middle of the room, and I'm like, okay, I have to find a switch and put water in the fountain or something. Walk up to the fountain, and this box comes up that goes, oh, maybe you should try and find full things to throw into the fountain. I was like, all right, I walk around, I find a vase, I kicked it, uh, there's like an amulet in it, I threw it in there, I'm like, oh, maybe three more of those, and you'll solve the puzzle. I'm like, yeah, all right. Walk around for ages, can't find anything. And then a message comes up and goes, well, why don't you try and find a ledge to walk up on? Now, I play a lot of games, obviously. I searched that room for probably about 20 minutes and I went back outside everywhere I could look to find this ledge they kept trying me to, trying to find and I could not find it. <laughs> the only time I did find a ledge, the scenery like ch -ch 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 pushed me off it because I wasn't supposed oh, yeah. to be standing on it. Uh, so I, go, I threw in the towel. That's the first thing that you're supposed to do, and I threw in the towel. I mean, it's a fucking terrible game. It's it's the frame rate renders some of it completely unplayable. The button pro there's button prompts that just pop up when there's nothing for you to do, just completely by accident. You'll say press it, and you're like, well, no, it doesn't do anything. It's completely it's busted. <laughs> it's one of those games that doesn't even have the decency to be so bad. It's funny. It's just so bad. You're just mm. like, I don't want anything. I don't want any part of this. Um, and it's just what a fucking harebrained scheme. You're working with a low budget. What what franchise are you going to attempt to mimic? The most <laughs> lavish and expensive Sony exclusive in the world. Why not? Oh my god! Fuck me! Unearth the trial of Ibn Battuta. <laughs> Fucking the trial of evil Knievel. Honestly, I'm in. Well, I mean, yeah, I would say it's worth a look. It's not. What I've just said is exactly what happens. It's you've made it sound better than I'm sure it is, but okay. I can imagine the sickness. It, it sort of building up inside your stomach as you're trying to find that ledge. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm walking back outside and then walking back oh, in the yard. Just like, that feeling, that feeling. Oh, it's the worst. I gave it benefit of the doubt because you know you get into those situations and then you just look at it with fresh eyes and like, oh, God, it's right there. There's, yeah. I, I don't know where the fuck this was or if the puzzle was something completely different and those sort of weirdly smarmily written, oh, maybe you should try this, were like completely just to wipe, throw me off the scent. I don't care. Unearth the trail of Ibn Battuta. <laughs> fuck off. Crap. <laughs> oh, man. I really want to play that. Well, I don't know how to follow that. Right. Uh, my number seven? Seven, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Dota 2. Dota 2. Now, oh, well. uh, a confession. I I did play this, but I didn't play it enough for it to be my number seven. But I did watch a fuckload of it. Now, normally that wouldn't count. But where I was last week was in Sweden, in the house, the training house of the best Dota 2 team in the world called the Alliance. Um, five Swedish dudes. Lovely boys. Uh, that sounded weird. Lovely guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fucking really smart, like, friendly guys who are just happen to be unbelievably good at this game. And they're currently traveling. They may have got there by the time you listen to this to Seattle to compete in the third, um, you know, the international. Have you heard of the international? Uh, Valve's yeah. tournament. That, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's the World Cup, basically. And I think the prize money this year is like $1.3 million or something Fuck. like that. Yeah, God. it's legit. Anyway... Um, it's kind of crazy because Dota is a game that has always been completely lost on me. I understood the very, very basics of how it worked. Three lanes on the map, five on five, you each pick a character, they have moves and stuff. You have these, there's these random little creatures in the world, you kill them to get money, you can buy stuff and you're levelling up within the match as opposed to between matches and having an overall level. It's only within each match and it's all about smashing the other team's tower at the end of their map. And, it's, and then all the strategy and depth comes after that. So I understood that. But it's kind of like, you know, the first time you ever worked out what ping pong was you happened to be watching the chinese national team oh, play yeah. ping pong you know what i mean yeah. it was just watching and play it was kind of completely bewildering but they had a a manager girl who was also brilliant at the game um and was like a former pro starcraft player or something anyway she she kind of talked me through what was happening as they were playing one day they were kind of having sparring matches against another pro team i'd say that's what they were doing another team that's going to go and be in this tournament but they were kind of sparring each other and she was explaining exactly what was going on. And, man, that game is fucking... It, it kind of makes me wish that I could have been in the situation to have played that game because I think it's actually... It's not like a really complicated, slow game. It's a really fast-paced... 
action game and all the strategy that comes into it is is all based on your roles within a team. So it kind of in that respect, it reminded me of Battlefield. And I think that had we managed years ago, this game had existed years ago and we all happened to, you know, happened to be on whatever we were playing, different set of circumstances, parallel universes. If this had been a game we'd all got into 10 years ago and our lives were different, we would have fucking loved it yeah. because uh, I can totally see all the appeal. It's 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 very, very much a video game. It's not something like, it's not that StarCraft isn't, but that to me is always going to be a little bit above what I'm capable of in terms of my brain and my fucking reactions. But this was more just about, yeah, team-based strategy. And, yeah, watching these guys play, was it was amazing, really, that anybody could be that good at it. It was like watching the fucking... They're the best. They, they, they've they recently formed, but they've went to China, their first ever foreign team to win in China, all this crazy stuff. They've, like, out of all the tournaments they've been in, they've won basically every single match, and they're the favourites to go and win this thing. So... Yeah, it was crazy. Crazy times. And, yeah, like I said, I played the game a bit myself, and it's cool but very complicated, and I don't have anyone to play it with, so I can't see me playing it much more. But it is free if anyone wants to try it. It's free? It's completely free. Sorry, I just kicked my bin. It's completely free, and um, so is that League of Legends, which is a very similar game. But in League of Legends, you get, uh, I think, two free characters, and then it rotates which characters you can have maybe every week. Oh, yeah. But in this one, it's completely free. All the characters are free. And what you pay for, if you want to, is cosmetic upgrades. But people get so into it that they end up paying a lot. And then they'll trade rare items with each other. Yeah. So it has its own economy. And I think the rarest items go for, like, genuinely thousands of pounds, which is fucking nuts to me. But, you know, if I can pay what you want for the things that you want, it's just about supply and demand. Mm. And that's how Valve are making money hand over fist. So, yeah, there seems to be they seem to be focusing excuse me, all their attention on this game now and, and flying everyone out there for this massive tournament that's going to be streamed all across the world. And it's, it's kind of a crazy thing that a whole giant culture within gaming that was kind of lost on me a few years ago, I didn't even really know what it is, and I'm just learning about it now. Yeah, no, I'm in the same boat as that. Um, do they just all happen to be Swedish, or is that like the national team? Uh, they just... It's not the national team. They're... They're, they're, I think, yeah, that's probably the best way to describe it. They all happen to be Swedish. Two of them have known each other since they were kids. Another two were mates and went on a different team. And then, uh, I then like, uh, they they all formed and got another player. And sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm telling the story terribly. But the reason they're called the Alliance is because they're basically coming together of two existing Swedish teams hmm. to form, like, a mega team. And, yeah, they're all aged between, like, 21, 25. One guy's really quiet, but, you know, the other guy's... Like genuinely outgoing, smart, uh, intelligent guy. Loads of interesting things to talk about outside of gaming. It's a really impressive, really impressive bunch, to be honest. Uh, so this is the, the this is now their line of work, I assume. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah they're, they're they're out there cleaning up in tournaments, then winning, like probably you know, a few thousand each time each. So they're making decent money. But if they go and clean up at the international, suddenly they become rock stars because yeah. they're all going to win. Two to three hundred thousand dollars each, Yikes. just from that tournament, and yeah, and obviously more sponsorships, more money. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's mad to see even the crowds that it attracts. Like it is a world that they called it the new rock and roll games for years, and I always thought that doesn't really mean anything. But seeing that, seeing that the fucking fans, seeing the you know the groupies, which is a weird thing to say, but it's true. Um, the culture around it now it's starting to make sense even though it's not something that I even really consider gaming in the same way that what we do and what we talk about most of the time. Yeah. But it was, it was mad, to, mad to see and be a part of, for, even for a brief amount of time. Yeah, wow. Um, yeah, that's more like Warcraft in that it it's, tends to be an obsession. I mean, I don't know anyone who's a casual player of those kind of games. Um, I don't that... think you can because I think the game's so demanding that yeah. if you were to just play it a bit, you just would be so shit at it that there's no point... Uh, whereas in a game like we, you, you and I could pick up pretty much any shooter because we know that language inside out, upside down, and play it, and it would match us up. And you know, it doesn't matter which one it is, an online shooter. But this type of game is so specific, and had, these people have been playing this type of game since Warcraft Three, since the original Dota, which is just a mod on Warcraft Three. That's all it was, mm. um, and that was like however many years ago. So they just understand this weird language that is this MOBA genre that's kind of spawned out of that. And to try and learn all of that, it, it would be, yeah, you have to, it's a huge undertaking. You'd have to commit to it if you wanted to do it. You couldn't do it by house. 
Yeah, okay. Well, interesting. So you haven't turned into a nut then all of a sudden? You're not going to start getting bang into it and whatnot? No, it seemed... As I was watching him play, I was like, I could. this looks really fun. You know, there's a reason. It's made by Valve. You know, it, it's clearly a very, very good game and looks fun as fuck. But you'd need four other people to play it with. You'd need way more time than I have in my life. And you'd have basically almost have to jack in all other games, I think to really get the most out of it. Yeah. Apart from like maybe handheld gaming and mobile gaming, you couldn't really play a Last of Us or something like that because you'd miss out on you know a week's worth of playing with your mates and then they'd leave you behind, you know. It just it is it's different. Yeah, it's a completely different world, yeah. True. Yeah. Um okay, fair enough. Um I will play that game sometime uh, just to try. We'll it. download it. Yeah. Especially you, if it's you free, get it on Mac. Yeah, it's free. So wow. even if you just do the tutorial, just so at least so you can go, oh, okay, that's what this game is, and then play with a couple of games with bots, and then even check in after that. Uh, the, the, but then you won't hear from me for like three weeks, and I'll be like, eh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna win. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't, you know, games that are that compulsive, I, I try and stay away from. Yeah, that's true. Um, okay, my number seven. <sighs> my number seven is R.I.P.D. The game on the Xbox 360. Um, What's R.I.P.D. Not the game. Um, R.I.P.D. is a movie starring Jeff Bridges and uh, Ryan, not Ryan Philippe, what's his name? You know, fucking Van Wilder, what's his name? Oh, Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds, yeah. Have you not seen the trailer for it? No. <clears throat> it looks like oh. it should be quite good. Apparently, it's absolutely appalling. Uh, it's about a guy, uh, uh, R.I.P.D. is like the everyone's dead the police department and they sort of police the afterlife. Um, it's, oh. It sounds like it should be great and it's apparently, by all accounts, it's shit. The game is as bad as the last one I spoke about. Um, but in a just even less, I can't even get angry about it. It's just, it's just fucking terrible. It's another Xbox Live arcade game, uh, also available PSN and PC. Uh, it starts okay. Um, it, the cell shaded comic panels tell the basics of the story, and that's quite nice. It's exactly the same story they tell at the beginning of the trailer, blah blah blah. And then the game starts. It's a third person shooter, uh, and you, it's co op. So there's two of you and. There's this new gameplay mode that they've devised where you fight waves of enemies. Once you've killed them all, then there's another wave of enemies. And oh, sweet. Of... I've never seen that before, and I've never seen it before in a third-person shooter. It's incredible. The frame rates are made... I mean, I'm the one... This is what... I, I Xbox Live Arcade games, downloadable games, the amount of times it's the frame rate is fucked from the second they come out. And you're just like, how did this... It's like there is no testing. It's like they mm. they they just throw things out completely unfinished. The problem with frame rate or across sort of downloadable games on consoles is just like it's a recurrent problem. Um, but the collision detection is terrible, which is uh, I've no I haven't said collision detection since the fucking Super Nintendo era. Yeah. But um, you go for melee kills and you get them. You have to be in a very narrow space, and then headshots don't take. If you I mean it's just it just it it basically doesn't work. Spells unlock as you play. There's this invisible. I got this invisible man spell where you send an invisible man out, uh, which is supposed to be a distraction, but they can't see him, so it doesn't do anything. And I just, I don't even know what it is. It's just, it's like um, Scourge Outbreak. I don't know who it's for. I don't know who could possibly want to play. It's made by old school games who m made God Mode like two or three months ago. Uh, which I really hated, but some people said was okay. It's the same thing, but even worse. It looks worse. The environment's a drab. It doesn't appear to work properly. The the demo is really generous, so if you're interested, uh, knock yourself out. But uh, you have to find a co-op partner, and I couldn't find anybody playing it. Um, so it must be another one of those games where uh, nobody's bought it, and nobody should buy it, because it's absolutely fucking god-awful. Uh, R.I.P.D. The game. It's just, it's just, it's just absolute crap. It's another third-person action game that's made for nobody, and this is no invention, nothing. It's just garbage. That sounds wank. It's as wank as Scourge Outbreak, and I don't say that lightly. Is does it have Ryan Reynolds in it? Uh, a vague and a vague approximation of Jeff Bridges, but it's not their um, voices. It's just, it's, it's one of the worst movie times I've played in a long time, and they're wow. all awful by by and large. I mean, it's, t it's just. Fucking! It's just it's the ultimate shovelware. Why is it here? Nobody wants it. Get the fuck out of my office. <laughs> Did you, there's a Pacific Rim game, isn't there? Oh, I've heard bad Somewhere. things about yeah, that. I'm yeah, I'm sure it's fucking shit. I haven't even seen even a screenshot of all the things as well. That could be such a good game. Yeah. But um, yeah. Anyway, that sounds R.I.P.D. It's diabolical. That's a shit name. Mm. 
Uh, all right, my number six is um, Rock Band 3, of all things. The reason I played this is because I had so much fun playing that Guitar Hero machine the other day that I decided to, to get the guitar out, find some batteries, and do a bit of Rock Band 3. And thoroughly enjoyable it was too. Played a yeah. massively long set list of all my favourite tunes, just thrashing out on a guitar. I have nothing interesting to say, really. It's a fucking Rock Band. Everybody knows what Rock Band is. Um... I'm still quite good at it, which surprised me. Uh, rock band is really hard compared to Guitar Hero in terms of the hard tracks. No, you know, the... you're off your nuts. I mean, it's a joke how hard Guitar Hero gets, even on hard, let alone expert. You, 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 you must be misremembering. Well, I, all I mean is the how um, it's very tough on hammer or the hammer-ons and pull-offs. Is that what they're called? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's tough, way tougher on the timing on that one on Rock Band than it is on Guitar Hero. The note charts get way more complicated in Guitar Hero, I would agree. Mm. But um, stuff that should be easy on Rock Band is harder than I think perhaps it should be. Uh, it doesn't even matter because who the fuck plays these games anymore? But it was fun. It was fun as fuck. They're still fun, but it, I think that was enough. That yeah, I didn't need to play any more than I what I played. Well, I mean, you played it on your own. Yeah, that's probably why. Um, I'll probably speak oh, to do full bandage would be would, would be yeah. fun to tell. Yeah. I want a drum. I definitely up for drumming. Um, yeah, uh, funny enough, just this weekend, just gone. I met my mate's new girlfriend, and she's from Denmark. And she was like, "Oh, my favourite thing. No one liked to do it. Um, it was like a, a really niche thing. Her and her friends used to do was play rock band." I was like, "Oh, I've got the full set." She's like, "You've got to come up at the weekend, and we're gonna." F-. So either this weekend or next, we're gonna have a massive rock band fest. Um, oh man. Uh, so that would be gleam. I'll probably talk about it then. And I've just been funny uh, earlier today. I thought I might get the drums out because my girlfriend bought me those portable drums that you put on a table, same as the normal ones. But oh I've, yeah, I've never yeah, used the, them. Yeah, I gave those to my brother. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'll speak about it in, at some point in the future. Um, okay, uh, my number six is a game called Hidden in Plain Sight on the Xbox 360. Um, I'm aware of this game. Yeah, I am aware of it also because I've, I've been hearing about it many times over the last few years, and I don't know why... I mean, I've been meaning to play it for, for two years. I mean, I think it's 2011, yeah, it came out in sort of 2011. Uh, I know from the the, the the guy that made its blog, is just he just put it on Ouya, so you can buy it if you're one of the two people that bought on Ouya, uh, yeah. and I think it's on other platforms as well. Um, I don't know why it's taken me this long to play it, but uh, it's a work of genius, um, but it's also a work of genius five times over because there is five gameplay modes and all of them are absolutely ingenious and it's 80 Microsoft points. It's a joke. It's up there in the Pantheon with the greatest exploit games there is um, and it's just the, a fantastic party game. Do you know how it works? No. Okay, it's... it's in, it, Sorry, ignore that. Uh, yeah, the first... I'll, I'll explain how simple it is. The first mode is called Ninja Party, and basically it's to- always top-down, and there's probably about 30 and 40, between 30 and 40 uh, little characters walking around in all sorts of different directions. The rules uh, of Ninja Party, uh, it's up to four players. I highly recommend you play it with four people. You can play it with three or two, but not one. Uh, first, first rule of every game type is find yourself. Um, so there's all of these characters. You don't know which one you are. Uh, so you have to move in a sort of unique way so you can say oh yeah that's that guy walking in circles but some of them are walking you know it's really difficult so the first thing I did to try and find myself was tap 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 so I'd like do little pigeon steps to one direction Mm. and then I was like oh there's my guy everyone else found out where I was as well because they heard my thumbstick going right Uh, Basically, on the first mode, you have to. There's all these coins everywhere. You have to. Oh, sorry, no, different mode. Ignore that. Um, you have to kill other players. You have to find other players out of uh, out of this thirty or forty. Uh, one of the other four, uh, either kill all the other players or touch five statues, which are in the four corners in the middle. And every time you walk over a statue, it makes a ding noise. Um, so you have to keep an eye on who. It's. You know what? It's it's really difficult to describe. Uh, no, even, I think I'm following you. Even when the um, even when the instructions come up on the screen, the first time you play, it, you're like, um, okay, I'll try and figure it out. Anyway, that's it's uproariously funny. Um, that's one mode. The second mode is catch a thief. Two of you are thieves. Um, you have to find yourself first, and then you have to collect coins, but don't get shot because the other two are sniper reticules and they'll shoot you. So you're watching the screen intently, seeing where the coins uh, disappear from. There's a slight delay, so they don't disappear immediately. Otherwise, it would be too easy. Yeah. Um, they take a little while, and that's just hilarious. You've only got one bullet. You can change all the, you can modify all of the settings. So if you want to have ten sniper shots, that's fine. If you want to change all of the variables, you can. There's death race where you, it's like those old horse gambling machines with all the all the characters walking across the screen. You hold A to walk, Y to run. You've each got one bullet, so you're c- controlling people walking and the, the targeting rescues. As soon as you right. see someone run for the finish line, you can shoot them. 
Um, so it's, it, 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 talking about it does nothing to describe how joyous it is as a game. The other one, the, the fourth one is Death Race. Uh, sorry, no, Death Race. Is that one? I'm getting completely mixed up. Knights versus Ninjas is the other one. Two Knights two ninjas the ninjas have to kill the royal family the knights have to protect them uh assassins uh creed is very it's very reminiscent of the sort of game types that were in the latest assassin's creed and the, the previous two um it's 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 unbelievable uh, talking about it seems completely futile it's like it's like trying to describe any great uh, any great game uh, let alone xbox live video games it's like trying to describe how brilliant uh mount your friends is to somebody you just have to put it in someone's hand and they'll understand it immediately mm. if you've got three friends who you can get around an xbox it's 80 microsoft points it's absolutely one of the best games on the service uh, it's more like a board game it has that you know the the, the sort of you, it, rare in co-op games or any games are you sort of given the opportunity to really scheme against each other mm. Uh, and it's just you will laugh your fucking ass off. Uh, a few beers, as everyone says. That's you know. I when I read the last recommendation, recommendation I saw, they were just like get some friends together, have a few beers, and that is the perfect way to experience it. It's hilarious and ingenious, uh, hidden in plain sight. It's probably available on oh, is it iOS. I'm sure it isn't, uh, but it'll probably be on PC, um, and it, it's probably on our, the other platforms like Android, I guess. Would it? I don't know if it'd be on mobile platforms. Thinking about it, but it's on uh, yeah, it's on Xbox Live Indie Games. Just find it and find some way to play it and get it done. That sounds fun as hell, but uh, as I've said many times, I don't, I'm never in a situation to play something like that. Well, well, well I, I'm gonna, I'll make that sort of situation happen as much as I can because it is honestly, you will laugh yourself stupid. It's mm. ge- a work of genius, seriously. Yeah, that sounds fun. That sounds fun as hell. It is. All right, uh, my number five then is a game that I've been wanting to play for ages: uh, Chivalry, um, Medieval Warfare on PC. Have you heard of this game? I don't think I have, no. Okay, so uh, Modern Warfare, as we all know, is a game where you run around and shoot people with guns. Uh, this is a game where you run around with a fucking sword and hack people up in the first person. It's exactly what it is. It's fucking knights, but uh, a deathmatch game. But in fact, it's more than a deathmatch game. There's team-based modes. There's uh, a mode that's similar to Rush where you um, have, like scaling objectives and it's it's really good it's kind of it's on the cheaper end of pc games so it looks nice in parts but it's not like you know you forgive it the odd rough bit of animation here or the odd you know the sound isn't recorded particularly well but fundamentally you can pick from like four class types like a quite fast bloke an archer a big heavy uh, broadsword guy and another guy couldn't quite work out and yeah you go and have sword fights with people basically you can block you can parry there's different types of swings you can fucking hack someone's arm off i love games where you can hack people's <laughs> arms off fucking love it that's what i wanted um and when you when you kill them they just writhe on the floor for ages sort of going oh uh, uh, <laughs> which again i definitely got something wrong with me anyway um the only problem the only problem i had with the game is that it's been out for a while and everyone that i was playing with it's not like on xbox where you get matched up with people who are also retarded and then you know you get better and better it is pc so you have to select a server and the full ones are unsurprisingly full of fucking geniuses at chivalry so i was basically just getting a fucking smashed and the odd kill there and here and there was a was a treat but basically it was just a nightmare so i'm not really too sure what to do about that sort of situation um it's it's too hard to really enjoy, so, which is a shame because I was just kind of I ended up not playing it on mouse and keyboard. I was playing it on a controller, and I was going, "This would be a riot on Xbox with a few mates, an absolute riot." But it's just too hard to play it like this, and that's it's not the game's fault. It's just that's the only problem I have with it. It's fucking fun though. Yeah. It's very very good. Uh, how old is it? A year. Wow, I'd never heard. Maybe. Of it. Yeah, it, it it became like the cool, the in game on on Steam. It, it might not even be that old. Excuse me. Yeah, it, uh, I just heard everybody talking about it on you know, like Reddit gaming and uh, on the Agaf and things like that. And I can see why. It's just it's the type of game that couldn't exist on consoles because it needs to be big enough that it couldn't just be like a little indie game. It probably could be an Xbox uh, Live Arcade game now, but even a year ago, it probably couldn't have been just on the the way those things are scaled. But there's no way you could ever charge full price for it. I think it was new, it was like 12 quid maybe, but it went down to, I think, three quid in the Steam sale, which is why uh, why I got it. But, um, yeah, just running up and piking a motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, that sounds gleam. Why did that it, not? Tra- that sounds like console like compatible completely as well. Yeah, I mean it like works beautifully on the on the controller, but um, I don't know. I mean, there is the the side of things where you ha- you need to you need a publisher, don't you? At the moment, if you're going to publish on Xbox Live Arcade, this yeah. is something that I'm learning only in the last few months of all the drama about the new consoles. So I'm guessing I, I think it's like a self-published game on Steam. So the hassle of getting all to that, you know, I don't know. I don't, the myriad reasons, but yeah, great stuff. But needs matchmaking. Yeah. But then That's someone will probably tell me on Twitter, he's like, oh, you're an idiot, just fucking do this. And then I'll have way more fun when I learn that, which always happens. All right. That sounds fucking great. That's a shame. It really it's is not, good fun. It really is. And you can, everyone charges in, like the beginning of the thing. Some of the quite big team matches, like eight on eight, I think. And everyone's just like, rah! And they're all charging, not on the mics in the game, the, the, the men are like that. And uh, yeah, I like games. I, I like fucking hitting things a lot. I like chopping people's arms off. And men screaming loudly. And yeah, you know, I just do. I just mm. accepted that about myself a few years ago. <laughs> okay, no, it's fair enough. Um, damn, that's a shame. That sounds really fucking cool as well. I no, can't... it's fucking pure meathead. You know me. <laughs> it's like the spirit of that Spartacus game, but actually good. Yeah. Oh, fuck. There's got to be a rip-off on a console somewhere on that X- XBLIG. I might have to try and look into that. because Yeah, just... but that would be pwned. This is quite high production values, really. Like, uh... it's sort of... Old B grade, you know, mm. the game that would be well, it's exactly what it is. But it would be twenty quid on PC, which is pretty much what it is. It just it used to be it used to come in a big box. Mm. Okay, all right, cool, all right. Okay, I've, I, 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 shit. It's a shame I can't play that. It, it's I, fun as piss. Maybe have a look do. on uh, have a look on Huge. Watch a bit on Huge. I will. Genuine, genuine. Okay, right. My number five is uh, Thomas was alone uh, oh, yeah. on the Mac. Uh, I bought it. Many months ago, when mm. Mike Bithell said, like, thanks to everyone, here's it for cheap. So I downloaded it for like two quid or something, three quid on the Mac. Uh, someone mentioned it on Twitter, and I thought, enough's enough. It's been sitting on my desktop for too long. So I started, uh, I booted it up. I don't have massive amount. The problem with coming to a game like this so late is that everything's already been said. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's really rather lovely. It's, mm. um, it, I, I really love the the sort of the narration. I mean, I, I don't really know Danny Wallace. I don't. I've never listened to him on the radio or seen him on TV or whatever. So I always associate him with that twat he plays in Assassin's Creed. Um, <laughs> so it's quite nice that he's genuinely quite am- amiable and pleasant. Mm. Um, and I love the Truman Show vibe at the beginning with this block observing all the tropes of platform games and stuff yeah. like that. Um, it's just really fucking lovely. I think I'm about three quarters of the way through. The ch- the, the puzzles are genuinely clever mm. and so. Si- I mean. Uh, uh, I don't know if it changes afterwards, but the there's a hundred levels, so you can work out exactly where you are. I think from that. Uh, I'm on like world or world four. Or okay, world three. so yeah, do you know it? it, it, it there's ten worlds, I think. So is yeah, that right? It's surprisingly long. Oh wow. Oh, okay, because I'd always heard that it was short. I don't know. I yeah, think... everyone says it's short, but it took me about five or six hours oh, at okay. least. So yeah. Oh, well, I thought I was getting towards the end. Um, but the, the the puzzles are genuinely clever, and the solution is always the other blocks. I don't know if that changes, but so far, there's no sort of things to get your head around. It's just ba- balancing blocks on top of each other, lifting the little ones up with the big ones and stuff like that. Yeah, like, it, really... never, it never runs out of ideas, I, I was gonna, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's been non-stop so far. Um, just so much mileage out of that concept. Most mm. games would have sort of tried to throw in sort of other bells and whistles, but the fact that they're just it's constantly ingenious. Um, and it's just... There's, it's. Again, I don't know if it gets difficult later, but it's quite easy and straightforward. Yeah, no, it doesn't really. There's a few head scratches, but you know, nothing that. Yeah. Nothing. It's similar to Portal. You know, like you'd be like, "Oh, how the hell do you do this?" And then five minutes later, you're like, "Oh, of course it's easy." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, platformers tend to be difficult just as a rule, mm. um, and this is it's no less pleasurable for being quite straightforward. At least as far as far as I've played. It's also incredibly accessible. I don't understand at this point why it hasn't appeared on iOS. It's a perfect fit. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, really. Um, yeah, I can see it working quite quite well on X. It doesn't demand a huge amount of dexterity, does it? You no. could do it on the touchscreen. Yeah, I but think it would work. I think it would work absolutely brilliantly. And it could it probably be a bit wouldn't appear on there. I think he was just did the PC and then was working on the PlayStation version. So mm. maybe in the next one he might farm it out or something like that. I don't know. Well, I think it could be a bit of a, a sort of sleeper. I mean, it's, it, I think it would fit perfectly. Uh, I played it on the, the Mac anyway. But yeah, it was it's really tremendous so far. Uh, my only complaint with it is that the beginning, the levels are very short, but there's long stretches of dialogue. 
um, mm. and I was enjoying hearing all the, the all, all the talk. But if you complete a level, it chops that bit short and then starts another one. So I had to sort yeah. of wait by the door a few times for him to stop speaking and then move through, um, which was uh, which was unfortunate. But uh, yeah, other way, I mean, it's really it's quite marvelous so far. But I'll uh, I'll speak more about it when I have finished it probably. Yeah, I think he lived down the road from you, and you lived in Tutu. That's weird, isn't it? Yeah, anyway. random. Yeah, um, yeah, I love that game. I've talked about it loads. It's really nice on Vita as well. Mm, I'm looking forward to whatever he does next. Mm. Uh, sweet. All right, my number four is uh, Pikmin, Pickers 3. Um, now, I actually did a bit about this, um, but, but because we didn't do an episode last week, it was due to be number one of the episode that we were going to do last week, if that makes sense. Mm. Um, and we recorded it, didn't we, after the previous podcast. Uh, if you want to hear that, then my proper lengthier thoughts on Pikmin 3, you can check it out on the YouTube channel. Or at, um, Do you say you're going to stick it at the end I'll of this put, podcast? I'll put it well? after the yeah. credits at the end if people want to hear it, yeah. So, yeah, I'll try not to reiterate what I say there, but um, it's fairly, I haven't actually played a huge amount more of it than that, but I've still got enough to say. Anyway, fucking Pikmin 3. Uh, it's, it's fantastic. I was very pleased to see that uh, the other reviews, I did the video game review which incidentally is their new style of reviews you should definitely go and check that out um i really like the idea they're doing the short reviews and then other content beyond that anyway i'll get to the point in a minute it's it's a lovely game i was really happy to see all the other reviews seem to be agreeing with me lots of nines out there it's just nintendo doing what nintendo can do better than everybody else layered layers upon layers upon layers of intricate puzzles that kind of peel themselves off like an onion and then you just onion yeah pikmin and then you have this uh yeah kind of ingenious world laid before you coated with a kind of charm and spirit and wit that other people just don't have the capability the the time the the skill to actually manage it's it's just pure classic nintendo and it's a marvellous game that we use, it, not having the best of times at the moment. There's a lot of talk at the moment about the sales figures, although I think they're actually the shipped-in figures, and it just seems like they might be consolidating. Anyway, if you have a Wii U, or if you're on the fence about getting a Wii U, Pikmin 3 is a marvellous game. If you have a Wii U, get it. If you're on the fence, this, what I said in my article on Video Gamer, this could be the catalyst to start turning the Wii U into something that you need to be interested in with this coming out. This month, Wonderful 101, which seems really good. Hopefully it will be next month yeah. in uh, what's definitely going to be the best version of Rayman Legends, um, which by all accounts is as good as it seems. Uh, also in August or maybe September. Then you've got Wind Waker in October, Donkey in November, Mario in December. I've said this before, but if they start hitting that month on month on month, then the Wii U will be... Everyone will be talking about it like they are with the, the 3DS at the moment. And that's all it needs. It needs the fucking hits. You can do it. Yeah. It doesn't need third party games. It needs the hits. Yeah, true. Um, I haven't played it yet, but I will hopefully have played it before last uh, next week. Even um, I can't bloody wait. And it seems it, to, it's it, brilliant. It seems to have sold all right. I mean, you don't know what, what what it takes to get to number two these days, but it seems to yeah. have done okay. Yeah, yeah. And I think it'll have a long like their their games. They'll have it'll have a long tail. Uh, it won't be like you know normal console games. It'll be around for a long time. Yeah, well, Nintendo don't. They re- you know it takes ages for them to drop the price of their first yeah. party stuff. So, uh, yeah, hopefully word of mouth will be good. I can't wait. I'll, I'll probably speak about it next yeah, week. Yeah, it's, it's a marvelous, marvelous piece of work from geniuses. And it's it's. I said this uh, in the other thing that I, the other week, but this feels like the first proper Wii U game from Nintendo. Yeah. It, you know, Nintendo Land was its own thing. That Mario game's brilliant, but it's a 2D Mario, very similar to the Wii one, very similar to the 3DS one and whatnot. But this feels like, okay, now we're, now we're going. It should have been a launch game, really, but yeah, true. then it wouldn't have been as good as it is. So. Exactly. exactly. What can you do? Indeed. Um, okay, my number four is One Finger Death Punch on the Wait, Xbox 360. Uh, I won't talk about it for too long. I'm, I'm writing a review of it, or I wrote a review of it, I should say, so I just wanted to sort of go back and smash it a bit more to see if it's as good as I thought it was. Uh, it is. Uh, I've also been sort of continuing to tour it around alongside Mount Your Friends just as a duo to show people, and they never fail to get the most amazing response. Um, 
They're incredible. Uh, uh, mm. well, Matt, one Finger Death Punch in particular. Um, well, not, not not because any better, but I'm talking about One Finger Death Punch. Shut up. Um, it's <laughs> it wouldn't it, 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 it wouldn't exist without Xplig, and the price point is just ridiculous. Eighty Microsoft points that couldn't exist anywhere else. Um, it goes if there's one problem with it, it's that it goes on a little bit too long because there's three difficulty modes, and if you want to sample them, you have to complete the game first, and that involves doing two 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 hundred fifty or so levels. Yeah, uh, and annoyingly, you can't zoom out of the map so you can't see how much is left um, right. which is a bit frustrating but it's the kind of game that I just turned it on before I played anything else and just did like 10, 10 or so levels and it was just mm. always just an absolute pleasure and just technically uh, 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 f- bordering on being faultless for, for an indie game to have achieved how technically incredible it is is quite something um, the, again the fact that it doesn't have online leaderboards is just such a terrible shame because mm. There's a there's a feature where you get a high score and then you can immediately message all of your friends, which I did, and a couple of my friends immediately bought the game and I got texts saying I'm going to smash your high score and I said guys it's, there is no such thing it can't be done um, because there's no online leaderboards. Which, this is all going to change with the Xbox One apparently um, and it's going to have achievements and stuff like that. So hopefully. Uh, that will no longer be a problem because it's a terrible shame that game should be I mean it's already I hope doing okay because it's been getting lots of publicity yeah. um, I just hope that uh, it, w- well, it would have done twice as well if online leaderboards were a thing um, that's a shame um, at the end of the game there's a really lovely really impassioned testimony from one of the creators a little, little, little video clip uh, with him thanking everybody for buying the game and uh, keep indie games alive and tell people you want indie games you know I think it must have been at a point where Microsoft seemed to be abandoning indie games altogether right, yeah. which now it seems like that's not the case but it's a really lovely little video he's like make your own game you know, it's, a, it's a lovely little video at the end uh, and the ideas never stop coming. You think it's not going to be any more inventive than it is. There's defender levels where you're rebounding knives that are thrown at you. There's a bit where you have to fight bosses, like two bosses at once, which is a mm-hmm. real head fuck. Mm. Um, and there's thunderstorm rounds where you can't quite see. Everything. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it, it just doesn't stop getting... It's brilliant. I absolutely, absolutely adore it. It's... Uh, uh, at the very least, try the trial. Apparently, it's coming. There's a trial on uh, PC as well. So um, Google that shit. One Finger Death Punch by Silver Dollar Games. It's uh, absolutely superb. It's the shit. Yeah, I haven't played it for a few weeks, but it is the shit. It is the shit. I would mm-hmm. love a Vita version at some point. That would be oh, fucking yeah. ideal. Yeah, it would. But uh, yeah, we shall see what happens on that one. I could, I could see it happening. But uh, yeah, in the meantime, go mm-hmm. and get it in. Eight mm. points. Get it in. Yes. Get it fucking in. Right, my number three is Metro, Last Light. Oh, yeah. I finally finished The Bastard. And my God, did it crawl. Um, I've got a lot of good things to say about Metro, Last Light, and I've said a lot of them on previous podcasts, but have you ever had it with a game? You probably have, especially in the world of reviewing, where you just find yourself clutching the pad, just going, end, fucking oh, yeah. end. Big and of course, yeah. The last, I mean, two hours of this game was me doing that. The game was done. There's a bit, a natural ending. It was done. The game was done. It just could have ended there easily. But for some reason, they felt the need to put another two hours on the back end of laborious combat. Do you know what? Things I fucking hate. Warehouse levels at the ends of games. Yeah. Don't do it. Shipyard levels at the ends yeah. of games. Don't do it. Juggernaut enemies <laughs> with fucking body armor, flamethrower enemies where you shoot the flame thing. All they start, all this got churned out towards the end of Metro Last Light. It's like you've done eight hours of game beautifully. You know, it was an extremely unpleasant game that I don't even consider fun. But that was what you were going for, and the stuff on the surface with the gas mask was horrible, especially for someone who, I've said this before, but I'm, I'm very claustrophobic and I have trouble with the hyperventilating and things, so that really, really gets to me. Uh, incredibly effective. Last two hours really start to undermine all of that. Um, and then, right at the end, it has this amazing scene where you kind of, I won't spoil it, but there's a few parts in the game where you walk through very, very crowded areas and there's one towards the end. And it seems like something out of a great movie, but even then just to the point where it could have just, with a bit of brevity and a bit of skill, not that there's no skill involved, there's an incredible amount of skill involved in the creation of this game. I, I don't want to be um, to be rude, where, you know, I think they just they just needed an editor, really. They needed someone to come in and just go, I know you're probably married to some of these sections and you're trying to tell your story, of which I completely lost the thread of about halfway through because there's a lot of talking and it's not interesting. Yeah. Um that didn't help either. And, yeah, they need someone to come in and go, 
boys, this is bollocks. You've made an amazing game. Let's pick out the three amazing moments from the last two hours, which there are. There's some, some cool moments. Put them in, and then you're done, and you're out. You, you're done. That's your game, because so much good came before it, and it just left me... It, well, you don't want to be... If you're a game creator, you do not want your player to be holding his part, screaming, end at the screen. Yeah. You don't want that at any point. I would That would kill me. So if they thought my whole game was shit, so be it. But especially if they you know, liked so much of the previous stuff, it's still amazed that they managed to make the game as well as they did from the circumstances that they that they have over in that studio. And the tech is amazing, but, yeah, it crawls like a motherfucker. Uh, there are loads of games that do that. I can't yeah. think of any... The only one that comes to mind is the one I spoke about, the Xplit game I spoke about on the last show. It's just like, they great ideas, great ideas, and then it just recycles for, for a couple of hours. You're like, why yeah. didn't you just stop when you were ahead? I don't... There is there is that weird... That it's, it's happening less and less, but that tightrope of walking, like giving too much... Trying to sort of give the illusion of too much content just by recycling yeah. shit, it's just, it really is infuriating. I know exactly what you mean. That's put me off. I've got it... I've, it's still sat here. I haven't touched it yet, but... Uh, it's I'm, still very, very good. I'm sure. And, yeah, the, I think... Because I put it on, because I felt like I was at the end, and I was like, OK, I'm just going to finish this now. So I, I did come in with that mindset a little bit because um, I just wanted to get it done. But... It felt like Return of the King, you know, just, okay, you're done now. It's over. Mm. And it, it's not, it only ends up being a 10-hour game, but fucking hell. But, I, but I'd still recommend it. I think the sevens that it got were very well justified in the end. Okay. Uh, well, I'll speak to Some about parts it are time. world-class. World yeah, class. I'm sure. And I was a big fan, as falsy as it was occasionally, I was a big fan of the first one, yeah. so I'm looking forward to it still. Um... Okay, all right. My number three is actually two games. Uh, I've just meshed it together. It's Mighty Switch Force One and Mighty Switch Force Two, both okay. of which are on the 3DS. I think there's a Wii version of the Wii U version of the first one, and a Wii U version of the second one is on its way. Apparently, um, I, re- I reviewed the second one for uh, for Games TM, so I bought the first one to try and see what the differences were. They're both. That there's not a lot of differences between them uh, in terms of quality. I think they're both good. They're the most good. Six out of ten. Never brilliant, never terrible, just straight down the line, good, you know what you're getting. It's like 6 out of 10, you know, fine, really good. Uh, they're platformers, and I didn't do a very good job of explaining last time, but the the, the system is basically you're flipping, you're, you're moving between uh, uh, different the background and the foreground. So blocks that are in the background when they're moved into the foreground become switches. They can trap uh, people, they can kill enemies, or they can catapult you uh, or one of your enemies somewhere around. It's a really inviting and a pleasant system to control, and it's really Moorish. Um, if I had to pick a favourite of the two, it's the first one, because the first one is kind of faster. Uh, the first one, you've got a pellet gun, so it's also more of a shooter. In the second one, you've got a water cannon. Um, it's still used for more or less the same thing, except there's bits of fire everywhere, and it's not okay. It's not really used... There are some bits where you find these sort of um, uh, blocks that have... You, you, pipes so you can sort of fire your water through and it shoots off into different directions but it's more for combat rather than puzzles um so i the first one's faster you set it, it all of it's about score attack really you set a, a time uh, sorry time attack i should say you set a really good time on, on a map and then you can go back and go over it the thing about the first one is that you can play through the whole game in one sitting and feel like you've done really well and then just go back to perfect it the second one it's more about sort of trial and error, and the maps are slightly bigger, um, and but the par times are much shorter. So you, it seems like because there was a bit of a complaint uh, initially that it was the first one was quite short. It's it, although it's the same length in terms of levels, it seems like they've made an effort to try and make it seem like it's a little bit bigger and more substantial. When it kind of sort of fucks with the game systems, I think it's much more fun to race through it and then go back and go over your. It's a, it's a bit more sort of exciting, a bit more sit in your pants, you know, sort of endlessly walking around and taking your time with it when it's supposed to be a uh, time attack game, just uh, ever so slightly less enjoyable than the first right. one. Um, but they're both very good. They're very entertaining. Um, the, what's bizarre about them is that they've both, the first one more so than the second, but both times, if you go and look on like Metacritic or find a review, someone will always say it's too short. They're about 16 levels long each, and I think there was additional levels on the first one. Um and it's five pounds. It's three. It's two, maybe three hours if you're only going to do it once. And it's five pounds. It's like that's completely reasonable. What more do yeah. you want? And I'm, but at the same time, I felt the same thing. I'm like they are a little bit short. 
But maybe that's just a weird... Maybe it's just accepting this new... I mean, £5 is the perfect asking price. I don't know why it feels insubstantial. Maybe it's just because it's never brilliant. They're really good, but never like, wow, that was really clever. Mm. They're really entertaining. I don't want to put them down, but I don't know. I was expect- When I first started playing, I was like, this is going to be the shit. They're going to mess around with all sorts of stuff, <laughs> but it doesn't really happen. It's good. They're good. They're solid. £5, I'd recommend both. Uh, £5 a piece. If you're going to pick one, get the first one. But... Um, yeah, they're nice games, entertaining, good, but they're they're not amazing. Mm. I do struggle with a six out of ten game these days. Yeah, I, I appreciate them, but you, you, they're they're difficult to recommend because there's fucking nines all over the shop, especially yeah, exactly. on the fucking three DS. So yeah, yeah, but, but, but it's just the standard at the moment. It's just crazy. You know? It's quite yeah. high. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, yeah. Yeah, maybe a few years ago, or maybe when the 3DS first came out, but mm. yeah, not now. Mm. All right, my number two is is Bastion, um, a game I talked about a few times in the last few weeks. Yeah, I finally got a chance to sit down with it properly today, in fact, uh, and yesterday, and um, it's fucking, it's superb. I'm so I was so happy that I got a chance to play it because when it came out on Xbox, I thought it was a different type of game to what it was. I looked at the screenshots which was this isometric, and it looks like everything's grid-based. And I thought it was like Discaea, like a really big, heavy, turn-based strategy RPG. No problem with that type of game, but no time for it either. Yeah. Whereas it isn't like that at all. It's an action game um, with dun- action slash dungeon crawler, but more more hands-on than your standard dungeon crawler. But as, as uh, everybody knows, I'm sure, and I'm talking about a game that's quite old and everybody probably knows about anyway, so I won't bang on about it too much. The main hook is, one, the world builds itself around you as you move, which is just a really cool effect. It doesn't really affect the gameplay at all, but it just looks wicked. And the coolest thing about it is the voiceover, and that it completely makes the game. There's no two ways about it. The voiceover makes the game. It is a mixture of a Wild West storyteller in a saloon and a classic noir private dick since very Sin City style, uh, talking about what you do, you play as the kid. And it, it, the way it's done is just, it, it's fucking brilliant. It will talk directly about what you're doing at the time. Um, and also it, it, it's slowly telling you a story at the same time. And the reason I put this, I actually put this after Metro on my list, even though I played it less than Metro because I wanted to make this point. The thing that started to kill me with Metro was that there would be a fucking three or four minute conversation between two Russian blokes about a load of boring shit and then there'd be another one and then there'd be another one and they'd go on and on and on and on and on and all right it's not right they're not writing in their first language blah 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 blah. but bottom line is it doesn't matter what language it it is it was too long too boring too much exposition completely laborious Bastion will tell that amount of story within four words there's no no hanging about it, it it's managed to create a, a world uh, a universe law all in the space of a few sentences you'll find something out in the world and you can go back to what's called the bastion which is your hub and speak to the guy that does the voiceover is actually a character in the game and uh, you can ask him about one of these items in the thing and he will explain it to you in a really cool way in nine words and you'll be like i know so much more about this world that i'm playing in now for that that's just skillful writing um and it, and that writing is what propels you through the game. The action itself is is good. You know, it's somewhere between a dungeon crawler and a twin stick shooter. There's parrying. There's uh, you can roll to evade, but ultimately it just seems to try to spam you with enemies, and you just have to roll around everywhere and try and hold on. There's not a massive amount of depth to it. it doesn't seem there's new weapons, even level up weapons, all that sort of crap. You've seen that before, but it's all about the style. Apparently it's not that long either, which really suits me at the moment because I can't be doing with a it's like a hundred hour epic. And for one pound seventy four on Steam, ridiculous! I'm just so happy that I've that I did play it and I and, and I play it. And also the music's amazing. Fuck, it's a great game. It really is. Um, I'm exactly the same as you. When I heard about, it, I kind of compartmentalised it in my brain somewhere, thinking I will never be interested in that because I thought mm. it was something completely different than what it is. Uh, Fuck. Okay. Oh, well, I'm gonna have to keep an eye out for when they're gonna if they ever um, discount that on Xbox. Because that's... trial it up, trial it up on Xbox. See what you think. Sounds fucking interesting. I mean, it's one of those games where I just like that's not interesting in the slightest. Mm. I, I don't know. I thought it was something different to you. I thought it was like a more of an action RPG. But I was just like, I've, uh, no thanks. Wow. Fuck. That sounds yeah, really I mean, interesting. it is an action RPG, but it's not. It's not like 
any other type of action RPG. It's fucking difficult to explain. Yeah. But in in terms of how the gameplay works, I mean, it is by default, by definition, an action RPG because there's RPG elements and it's real time action. But it feels more like an action game in terms of the the moment to moment combat with the rolling, with the parrying, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll definitely... But it's the style, man, the writing. Yeah. You know I can't do impressions, so I should do an impression of the guy. You'd do a good one, but um, I don't want to spoil it, but it is brilliant. And the fact it does it as you're playing, like, reactively. It's not like a script that's just being read through, like Thomas was alone. It's actually reacting a lot of the time to what you're doing. Um, brilliant. Such a cool idea. Yeah. yeah Couldn't be done in any, other, in any other medium either. Okay. That sounds really, really cool. Mm. Um you think don't bother with the iOS version? No, I'm very glad I played it. It needs. To, I'm sure the iOS version is fine, but I knew straight away that it needed direct control to get the most out of it, and it definitely does. Okay. All right. Cool. Okay. Uh, all right. My number two is a game called Mars Warlogs on the Xbox 360. It is. Uh, it was all. It came, it's, Three or four months old, it came, originally came out on the PC, and it's just hitting Xbox Live Arcade. I don't know for definite if it's on PSN or not. Um, have you heard about it? I think so. Yeah. I think I've heard about something like this. Yeah, it's a third person... I'd say it's an action RPG, but it's not really. It's quite the RPG. Uh, it's If you're the kind of person who's really fed up of this whole influx of action RPGs where the action is sort of 50% of the, of the, 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 the pie, uh, this is much more old school it's much more reminiscent of the witcher that was an action rpg too but this is a lot the the action has a lot less to do with it it's all about crafting and scavenging and skill points and perks and conversation trees and morality and all that stuff it's a lot more of an involved uh, rpg it's really imperfect but i couldn't help thinking of uh, state of decay Okay. Um, primarily because uh, instantly it looks kind of like State of Decay. I don't know if they were made on a similar engine, but it looks very similar. But because this is a smaller, the environments are smaller. There are none of the technical hiccups that State of Decay has. Right. There's none of the frame rate issues or the just the random sort of bugs that that are in State of Decay. This is a much slicker game. <laughs> But in the same way that you said um, when you were playing it that this is going to be some people's favourite game ever, mm. I felt like that playing this. It's not my favourite game ever, but I know people who are going to fall absolutely madly in love with it. Um, I, it but like I said, it's imperfect. It's a, One thing I'll say about it, it's one of the most dead serious games I've played in a long time. There is no humour. It opens right. with uh, an attempted rape uh, in a prison. Uh, the only thing that's wrong with that is that the voice acting's so fucked and that the, the NPCs aren't particularly sophisticated that it kind of it's 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 tough to sort of t- they want it to be a really hard hitting bit and it's not quite. Um, it's set on Mars, obviously. It it's Mars that's sort of a little bit Total Recall. It's a little mm-hmm. bit Fallout uh, Fallout Three, I should say, and it's a little bit Alien Three. Just and also good, primarily. I think that's because there's so many sort of cockneys walking around. Um, there's nothing original about it. Uh, it starts out you're in a prisoner of war camp, uh, and the chapter one is you breaking out, and then the rest. There's only three chapters, um, but the rest of the game is set outside the prison, and it's just standard RPG stuff. You've done it all before, but it's genuinely branching. Um, so there's all sorts of decisions that you make that genuinely. If, it's one of those. Uh, halfway through I sat back and I thought wow so much work has gone into making sure that all of these things build to a certain conclusion and all of these there's one very very finite sort of uh, uh, decision that you have to make which will completely skew the story about uh, at the t- sort of towards the back end of the game um, which you can save before if you want uh, want to avoid it but it's really it's 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 um, they haven't skimped on any of that stuff it's genuinely branching stuff that you ignore doing uh, and you know can have re- repercussions it's also um reminded me a little bit of um uh, infamous because the currency in the game which is also health is a, a serum yeah serum um and it's quite scarce so you can be either good or bad you have when you've finished having a fight with someone you can kneel down and sort of extract serum from them and right. that that kills them or you can leave them alone and obviously doing one or the other affects merchant prices and interactions with other people and stuff like that um it's it is humorless and dead serious and but but in some cases it's quite effective i mean it opens with this voiceover about how miserable war is and it's actually really quite evocative and well done um it's very narrow. Um, there's lots of NPCs forming invisible walls, and they never speak to you. Um, so you're always blocked off. It's not. It feels like it should be open, and it's not. You're always. F- I mean, it is open. You are free to do everything in your own way. But it, it's loads. A lot of corridors, uh, even when they shouldn't really feel like corridors. 
Uh, it's a real trial by fire with regards to the combat because the demand it demands that you learn it quite quickly. And it, there are times when it says maybe you don't want to go this way because you might want to level up your combat first. But if you go that way, whenever you're in combat, you can't act, and until you leave your combat stance, you can't open doors, you can't run away. You have to have the fight, so you have to lose loads of fights and then keep going out of the door. It's, it's just a fault with the game. Right. Um, it's it, it's not original. Um, but I've really liked it, and the seriousness is it was kind of refreshing. Um, with I mean, there are technical, minor technical difficulties. I mean, there's the, the, the attack reaction when you get hit by someone. The, the sort of the the reaction animation is quite long winded. So if there's a crowd spamming you, you can just stand there going, uh, uh. as you level up, that happens less and less. I mean, there's, you know, there's moves that sort of get faster and stuff. It's all it's all about leveling up. It's so involved and so much of a RPG fans are going to love it. If you think that sort of Mass Effect's a fucking action game um, and you love the RPG elements, this is I wouldn't say hardcore because it is it is quite accessible. Um, but yeah, it's I, I really liked it. There's a, the, there's a weird, the only the, the thing that's weird about it is that the character names seem to be like the woman who helps you and sort of gives you a place to hide and sort of uh, her name's Charity, and the okay. ki- the kid you've got underneath your wing who you show it, you know, you sort of his name's Innocence, and I'm just like I don't know why they did this, calling right. all these characters by the by who they are uh, seemed a bit weird. Um, it's imperfect, but it's really surprisingly interesting it takes itself very seriously it's an interesting enough story and yeah it's made by a development team called spiders have you heard of them no not at all this might be wrong but i think there's it's five people and if that's the case it's incredible um there's a there's a there's a trial available on xbox live i think Mm. people should have a look at it I, i don't know whether they'll start you at the beginning or not but uh uh, you should check it out. It's it's uh, RPG fans, especially if you if you're the kind of person who thinks that all the other stuff just polluted RPGs, because it is all about sort of skill trees and the, the, all about the conversation, managing your morality and stuff like that, looting, crafting, really involved crafting system. Um, I really liked it. It's not n- naturally the kind of game I'd gravitate towards, but uh, yeah, it's uh, pr- pretty damn good, I think. That does sound cool. It's, it sounds it sounds very cool, very I, interesting. I also like the delivery. I, I love this delivery. It's about ten hours long. Perfect. Mm. That's what I, I want. All games to be twelve hundred Microsoft points and be ten ten pounds. That's what I want. Uh, sorry, ten ten hours long. It's like yeah. uh, part of me is done with four. I mean, there are exceptions, obviously, but this seems like the perfect. There's so little fucking about. Here's the game. It's ten mm. hours long. There you go. There's there's very little dicking around. Yeah, I, I think it's worth a look at the trial at the very least. Mars Warlog, eh? Yeah, I'm not sure about the title. Yeah, weird title, but mm. um, yeah, I might have a look on the see if there's a demo on PC as well. I'm sure there will be. I think it's yeah. actually part of a part of the. I don't know if the Steam sales even on it anymore. No, but... it's finished now. Okay. I think it was. Yeah, but I didn't know what it was, so I didn't uh, didn't have a look. Mm. Hmm, that sounds cool. It's it's definitely more interesting. At first, I wasn't sure, but uh, as it went on, I was like, "Wow, this is actually." Uh, it's what you, know, you can dislike things about it, but you have no doubt that the people making it—that's the game they wanted to make. Yeah, sure. So it's uh, it's 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 tough not to not to admire that. Yeah, it's worth uh, find the trial if you can. Mm, right. Oh yeah, we'll do. Um, cool. My number one, brilliantly from what you just said, the game that they wanted to make, perfect. Uh, my number one. Maybe technically I played this game less hours. I've been a bit a bit cheeky this week, but I wanted to talk about it last because I played it today um, from finishing work until just before we started, maybe maybe an hour and a half before we started. Anyway, it's called uh, To The Moon. Have you heard of this game? Uh, yes, I definitely have. I'm not sure which one it is, though. Okay, so I've been hearing about this game. It came out in November 2011, and I've been hearing about it probably in the last... Probably this year, um, people talking about this game. I didn't really know anything about it other than it was supposed to be quite emotional. That's all I'll say. Um, I kind of want to talk about this. We, when we do this podcast, we get quite full on, obviously, and we want to deliver things in a certain way and, and make it engaging. But I kind of feel like now I want to... If you're, if you're in an office, you'd sit on the corner of the desk and say, "Let's rap for a while," you know, like a fucking dickhead. That's how I want to talk about this game because it really did. It did. It did. Like, uh, it fucking got me in a way. To, to the moon is one of the. Simply put, is one of the most like beautiful creations I have ever come across in any medium. It was absolutely astounding, an astounding piece of work. That. I just, I was just like, I absolutely love it. It could be. And I'm prone to hyperbole, as we know, but hmm. it, it could be 
I could easily be my favourite game that I've ever played. What? It's it, honestly just thinking about it now. I only played, finished it. The game's about probably three and a half, it took me about three and a half hours, I'd say. I did it all in one sitting, and um, it just absolutely blew me away. Absolutely fucking blew me away. It was just wonderful. It's a wonderful piece of work. So I'll explain it briefly. Um, it is a uh, 16-bit graphic uh, point-and-click game, basically, um, with a small amount of puzzling, and it's mainly exploration and small, yeah, small amount of puzzling, exploration, and pushing along the story. Now, the story is high concept. Um, Right, okay, it's about a guy, a guy called Johnny who's dying. He's he's in bed dying, right? And he is at some point signed up for this program where these people will come and they can grant you your whatever wish, whatever wish you want for your life by basically using an inception machine and going inside your memory, live, viewing your life in reverse and then planting a... Uh, an idea basically in your in your mind uh, and then that you become that person in your memories and do what you wanted to do right and what johnny wanted to do was go to the moon um what follows from there which is a a, a daft concept but they never really worry too much about um over explaining it or over scientifying it and there's always a light edge to everything in this game that's uh as beautifully written as it is and as, as delicate as, as it is, it's also very funny. Uh, yeah, what then follows is you play as one of these two doctors, um, the man and a woman. Uh, the man's called Watts and the woman's called... I can't believe I've fucking forgotten this already since I've just played it. Her first name's Eva anyway. Her, her surname begins with an R, but it's escaped me for some reason. And you go backwards through Johnny's life and um, he's just... Uh, him as an old man has just lost his wife two years ago so you kind of go back through i won't spoil any of this game i won't really talk about it much more than than the basics you go back through and kind of explore the relationship with his wife and and all this sort of stuff and it deals with obviously life and death and choice and things like that but it also deals with like issues like autism and things like that um it's all done by one guy, ostensibly, this this uh, Chinese-American. I think his name is uh, is Gao Kan. He was also a, a pianist and a musician, and much of the game is, is underpinned by this beautiful score that he's done himself, a lot of it, which is diegetic. Um, people play the piano in the game. And uh, even though there's not a huge amount of gameplay to it, there are puzzles to solve. There's like a quite... Um, fun tile puzzle that comes up uh, regularly which isn't too hard and there's the there's like clues to find it's just a beautiful story honestly it's it, it's a story that could have been done in a different medium but the interactivity of it does lend everything that ends up happening a kind of gravity because you do feel like you are directly involved even though the uh, from a gamer point of view, the interactions are probably quite are quite limited, and there's not a huge amount that you're doing, but it doesn't matter. And again, to go back to that point about Metro, this game never fucks about. You know, it never. If there's a, a menial task for you to do, it will just cut you straight to the point where you're either doing it or you've already already done it and you're back where you need to be. It's, it doesn't feel the need for you to walk all the way to the place and walk all the way back, all that kind of thing. And it somehow, yeah, like like brilliant film writing, manages to be incredibly poignant, soft, delicate, very touching. I'm not. I mean, I'm a fucking softy, but I was in floods, man, at the end of this. And I'm not the only one going on the Facebook page, but it seems to be that that's what happens. But um, it's also, like, manages to genuinely be funny. Uh, the, the Watts character is, is a bit of a... He's a bit of a wisecracker, and a lot of the lines are, you know, properly laugh-out-loud funny. And just... I don't... I can just talk about it forever, because it was just... It's perfect. It, that, there's not one one nanosecond of it that I thought could have been different or better. It's deeply personal, it's completely charming and endearing, touching. It makes you think about your whole life. It made me think about my whole life, my family, everything that I'm lucky for, everything that I'm scared of, and all while ever, never feeling pretentious and never stepping overstepping his marks. All on top of that, in incredibly like clever, high concept way, which um, 
made me feel like the stuff about Inception, which I loved, which wasn't the the complicated puzzles and things that people talk about these days about Nolan's movies, but it was the emotional stuff in Inception, which really got me, like, when they're down in limbo and everything's just just so raw and uh, and the whole tone of the film just kind of draws you into this relationship and it's not really about the fucking mechanics that's what it that's what this this game made me feel like and by the end it's just perfect it's perfect what was the online multiplayer like <laughs> yeah there isn't any but the in-app purchases are a little bit pervasive fair play Wow, um, shit! That's not the game that I thought you were talking about. I was talking about. Uh, I was thinking of something that was kind of a, 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 a space simulator of some kind. Oh, like Kerbal Space Program or something. Oh, maybe, yeah. maybe. Um, uh, yeah. Oh, fuck. Okay. Well, that's that sounds like quite something. Um, how much did you pay for it? Was it another a Steam sale? Job? It was. It was one pound fifty. <laughs> yeah, one pound fifty, one pound sixty in the Steam sale. I how don't much? think it's. I don't think it's massively more than that. Now I think it's probably like a fiver. Can you get it on Mac? I don't know. I would assume so. Um, it's such a, such an amazing piece of work, and straight away, like it doesn't take any effort or or any. It doesn't plod. It's not slow. You know, it's straight away from the fucking first second of the game. I was completely into it. I had the intention of playing it for a bit, and then doing a bunch of other games to talk about on the on the podcast, like some of the games higher up on the list which I didn't didn't probably play enough but that's because I, I couldn't put it down not that you put a game down that you're playing with a mouse but you know what I mean hmm. I couldn't I couldn't step away I had to just sit, sit there I just wanted to know what, what was happening and and, and the, so well constructed and it's the guy fucking 23 I read on Eurogamer he was 23 when he made this game he's some sort of genius Wow, okay, all right, well, I'll, I'll look into that as soon as we finish recording Yeah, this. you mean you're not as fucking softy as me, so it won't get you as much as it did me, but you're still, I'm sure you'll still love it. Okay, all right, well, yeah, that sounds, I, I love stuff like that. I mean, I, it's annoying that those kind of things don't get, I mean, because I should have heard of that. That's, I mean, I have heard about it, I mean, I know yeah. I've heard people talking about that game, but it is weird how things, that there is a barrier that, that, that sometimes those things don't cross over. Um, I think it's like... In this world, when it's on PC, it's kind of like um, how music used to be in that, that someone could release an album but and it could be out for a year but then take off when it's suddenly, you know, they, they tour with the right people or it just suddenly gets the right coverage in the right place and then it starts to take off from there. Yeah. So that seems to be the way that the, the PC indie scene can be. Not that me talking about it is suddenly going to make the game take off. It took off way before any fucking idiot like me ever had anything to say about it. But... Um, Brilliantly, he's doing a sequel as well, and given the concept of what the game is, they're, they're scoped to do infinite amounts of them with these characters. But uh, what a what a wonderful piece of work! Yeah. Okay. Well, um, hopefully the sequel's got uh, different skins for your gun in it. Yeah. No way. I mean, no doubt. I can't even be fucking clever. I, that, that game's amazing. <laughs> well. Okay. Well, no. I, I will play it. I will. I will definitely play that. Um, uh, okay. Uh, bizarrely enough. My number one is the exact opposite, whilst also at the same time being kind of similar, because I think it's well, it's 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 in it's in the upper echelons of the best games I've ever played. Uh, my number one is Hotline Miami. Um, oh my god, you've actually played Hotline Miami? Yeah, uh, I almost bought it on. Um, uh, I downloaded it for my Mac, but it was exactly the same price as the PS3 version, so I just thought I just bought the PS3. Uh, version yeah um it's the same thing as thomas was alone i don't have a whole lot to say about it because everything's already been said uh it's dynamite everyone I, yeah, I, I knew I'd fucking love exactly it. i knew i'd love it too i knew i don't know why it's taken me this long it, the, the way to explain how my reaction to it if you just took three polaroids of my face f- f- five minutes ten minutes twenty minutes from sort of confusion to ah oh, to just a fucking shit eating grin um <laughs> It's just it. Uh, everyone knows what it is. There's nothing I can really say. It's yeah, but just, I want to hear what you have to say about it because I've always been excited to to. I've always wanted you to play it. I mean, the game's been out for ages, and yeah. I've always wanted to play it. So I knew you'd love it. I don't know. I mean, to be honest, I did. I didn't really keep track of my thoughts. I was just like, I knew this was going to be as absolutely brilliant as it is. One thing I will say, I can totally understand why people who played this on a massive keyboard could think that nothing could could compare. 
It, this probably doesn't compare, but it comes about as near as possible as it's. I mean, it, it it's, a lot of care and attention has gone into making this fit onto the onto the uh, PlayStation Three pad. Mm. Um, it's really slippery and fast, and the, the, it's like putting the maximum sensitivity settings up on an FPS. Where yeah. you know, my friend, some of my friends play like that, and I try. I'm like, I can't. It's just impossible. You, I mean, it takes a, a bit of getting used to, but you can genuinely do things that I'm sure people who've done it on a mouse and keyboard would think were impossible um and it's not you play it at just such a relentless speed it's that i i just love the way that things that you do in every action game are almost impossible and sometimes and just it, the, the the brilliance of it's, the amount of times it just it literally took my breath away when I'd accidentally, I remember there was one instance where I was back running around and I saw this dog and I backed into a room with three guys and I, bah, 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 and I shot four guys uh, and the dog in the space of about a second. Yeah. <sighs> and it's just, oh, it's brilliant moments like that. Mm. It, it just, it's a non stop. And just, it's, each level's very, very different. Mm-hmm. The way the enemies are, the way the level's structured. Unbelievably clever. I mean, I'll be the million and one person to say that uh, million and first person to say that the soundtrack is stunning. Yeah. Um, I just, I mean, I, don't, I haven't really bothered to sort of take pause and think about what my thoughts are because it's just, it's, it's just, it's clearly some kind of masterpiece. Um, and I don't know why it took me so long to play. I've recommend, I've, I've conveyed this. I've attempted to convey this uh, to friends of mine uh, just this weekend, just gone actually, and they're like, "Yeah, uh, when you said that, I looked at YouTube videos." And I was like, "No, don't." I mean, look at YouTube videos all you want. Mm. Five minutes with a pad in your hand, it all makes the most oh, yeah. brilliant kind of sense. I mean, it's just. <laughs> I don't know how they. T- it's it is something you look at. And you're like, how are they going to make that that clever, that interesting? It's a top down shoot 'em up. Mm. The systems are faultless. I mean, it's just it's, it, it is a masterpiece. I mean, it's it's pure excitement. It's visceral and it's nasty and it's just and there's a real sense of place. That weird, yeah, a, a sort of 1980s uh, era. Yeah, it's weird how there is that sense. I really felt like I was going somewhere when I mm. stuck it on. Um, and the first time I got a, a is it A plus? I think it's the top rank. Oh yeah. Oh god, fucking hell! What a game. Yeah, it's it's amazing. I'm I'm envious of you and actually been able to have played it clean. Yeah. Because obviously I had so many problems with it. But I've said that before plenty of times, but the fact that I kept going back to it, yeah, I knew there was something there, there from all the problems in the amount that it screwed me over constantly. Yeah. Yeah. But to playing that clean that clean play through on Vita was was amazing. And yeah, I am chuffed now. I'm chuffed that you you finally played it. I thought that you never would. But I know I am chuffed that you played it. No, I knew I. I think I was kind of waiting for a, for a sale or some shit. I don't know. Yeah. But it's just it had been too long. I knew I was going to fucking love it. Um, I just wish it was on Xbox because I'd like to be able to. I, there's friends that I'd force to get it. I have a couple mm. of mates on PS3 and they've they've bought it and hopefully we can get some high score sort of competition on the go. Yeah. But um, it is it's singular, really. I mean, like again, it's like it's it's you have no doubt that they wanted to make that game exactly, exactly. as it is. Yeah. But uh, you know. Even if you don't like that stuff, if you don't like the music for some reason, if you don't like uh, aspects I of it... Imagine not liking the music. That would be a little bit weird. Yeah. Um, but if there are aspects of it that you don't like, just as a game, just the systems, every mm. fucking pitch perfect, the amount of just... And just the quick restarts, quick restarts, trying yeah. different things, experimenting non-stop. Ah, God, it's fucking brilliant. It is. It is brilliant. I'm pumped for the sequel. Yeah, me too. I'm going to get that one uh, early. I hope it comes up vaguely, vaguely at a similar sort of time. Or maybe I'll just brave a brave mouse and keyboard. It's not uh, my natural... I reckon they might try and get it day and date on PlayStation. Oh, I hope so. That would be fucking gleam. Mm. I reckon they might well. Yeah. Six quid, six quid of magic. So, is that what it was? Was it six quid? Yeah. yeah I, six. Can't, I can't remember. I've played it on so many different formats. But, genuine. yeah, it's a special game. No doubt about it. And the story's good as well. It is. Yeah, it, yeah genuinely is, yeah. Yeah. Sweet. All right, that was a fucking epic. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's what you do when you have to go away for work. Cheers for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, well, if you'd have let me know in enough time, I could have got uh, I could have got someone else on. But you told me at the last second, you mug. Yeah, I got. Oh, who cares? Um, <laughs> all right, follow us on Twitter. Uh, I've just checked the Twitter actually, and there's more recommendations coming through, which is fucking sweet. So that's amazing that that even happens. Uh, thank you very much. Please. Just give us more recommendations. We'll pretty much probably play it through all of them, unless a we've already played them, or b we we forget. So yeah, <laughs> <That's very laughs> tweet likely. us at, um, at Chet and Johns. 
for that or individually at John Denton at Chet Roy Vessel. Just fucking talk any old shit to us and we don't care. Um, you can follow us on Facebook, like us on Facebook. You'll get an update if you want to on there. There's not really any point. Don't, you can go to the website as well. There's no point to, on doing that unless you... I don't... I just stop talking. <laughs> and YouTube. Yeah, go on to YouTube. Check Says out the YouTube. YouTube. Rue McClanahan. I don't know what to say. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> I'm really tired. So my number one is Pikmin 3 on Nintendo Wii U. Now, I know you're very excited about this game. Yeah, yeah big time. Uh, Pikmin 3, as everybody knows, is the sequel to Pikmin 1 and Pikmin 2, long awaited. Uh, and in my opinion, uh, three things. Number one, it's very, very, very good indeed. Number two, it's properly classic Nintendo. Mm. And number three, it's the first proper HD franchise game Nintendo's ever done. I know there's new Super Mario Brothers U, but that's 2D, and it's very familiar with games that have come out in the last few years. This feels like the first proper big Nintendo game on Wii U for me. Um, I I played Pikmin 1 when it came out in the GameCube. I didn't really get on with it. I didn't like the 30-day thing, yeah. uh, and so I didn't play 2. But um, this, to me... Obviously, you know the basic structure of Pikmin. You get the little plant dudes. You you know you control them like an army, like a kind of RTS, and you solve puzzles with them, do combat. People know what Pikmin is, right? Um, in here, though, it feels like almost like a Nintendo greatest hits. This is everything Nintendo does as a development studio, kind of put into one game and laid bare. It's about, like I said, solving puzzles. It's about uh, making you feel both incredibly stupid and incredibly smart within the same five-minute space. It's about being really, really charming, but also oddly satiric and with a, with, a, with an edge. Almost all of their stuff has a slight edge, even if you think about some of the stuff in Mario. It's just, you know, he's pretty murderous. But this, obviously, is probably the Nintendo's harshest game. In fact, it's fucking harsh. But uh, overall... I think it's the best game that they've done in a long, long time, probably since Galaxy 2, which is a few years old now. It's a very special game indeed. Um, as you can see by, if you do watch the video, it looks it looks fucking amazing. It really genuinely does look amazing. People have talked about the Wii U and how it doesn't have the graphical power of even the current gen consoles and whatnot. Maybe that's been the case for people trying to port third-party stuff over. They haven't really given it the time, or they haven't done this. It doesn't matter. This game, Nintendo, with with their own console, with their own technology, however long they've been making it, looks absolutely stunning. It's so detailed. It's crystal sharp, um, crystal clear even. And, yeah, everything about it, like, there's stuff like little sand effects and when it rains when you're down on the world uh, everything gets covered in like a glistening sheen and it feels it just looks fucking amazing all the fruit that you pick up looks amazing so is there anything you want to know about how, about how it works or, um, or what's really, new no. about this one well i played it i played it several months ago um mm. and th- at that point there was only one control style do you have to have a wii remote and nunchuck you can't just play it on the on the pad can you no you can play it on the pad yeah oh, you can yeah i've only played it on the pad in fact um, so I do. I mean, I, I know there's the Wii, the Wii remote styles in there, and I've heard that that's actually better for some of the boss fights because you get a bit more accuracy. But when you play with the pad, you have a interactive map on the gamepad and just standard Pikmin one controls on the on the sticks and whatnot. But the map is actually really good because you can you tap it and it pauses the game, and you can drag it around um, and see where you want to go. And it has a good radar system. It tells you where through as you get as you like level up, not level up, but as you progress. You uh, can get more detail on the map, so you eventually get a fruit or certain things you should look out for. And it has a really cool thing where you can tap somewhere on the map and then press go here, and they'll just automatically go here. So uh, when you get to a certain point in the game, you have three dudes 
that you can control and split up and put into their own separate teams. So as you get better at the, get, at the game, you can give all of them their own bunch of Pikmin and then start setting them up for little tasks. So say one bunch is trying to knock down a wall, you can fuck off with another two and get them doing something and then sporadically check back. And once they're done, you can just send them back to the Onion. Uh, the Onion is obviously the home base where the Pikmin live, so they don't get in trouble while you're out doing other stuff and you start to multitask like that. The game never really demands that of you, but you just naturally get... I found myself naturally getting quite good at that after probably about eight or nine hours, so it's never daunting in that respect. It's always taxing, but never. it's never too hard. Yeah. Um, and then there's loads of really clever puzzles that involve using all three of your guys to like get over a ledge and then do thing with Pikmin. All stuff that, like great Nintendo stuff, like I said, makes you feel like a dumbass for ages and it makes you feel like a genius when you solve it. Um, like the best stuff in Luigi's Mansion, like the obviously the best stuff in Zelda and Metroid, which this has a hell of a lot in common with both of those games because it has large worlds where loads of stuff you have a clear path through it but there's loads of stuff that kind of looks strange looks maybe out of place or maybe it doesn't and then it starts to unravel itself and then becomes this much more detailed level with all these different options and ways of breaking it down and ways of kind of rinsing it for all of, all the stuff that you need to do as well as progressing just to get to the boss uh the more i played the more i was just like fucking hell nobody does it like nintendo when they're when they're on form like this yeah god damn it i can't wait um I think the best. I, I that the, the the control scheme with the pad sounds really neat, but I bet you it's you, you will love it even more if you use the Wii Remote and Nunchuck. Because having played it like that and having played Pikmin Two like that, that's mm. just it feels so natural. They made it feel perfect, like almost as if the game uh, would be half half as entertaining without it. Um, so if you have you got those at home, if you have, I do have those. Yeah, no, I do intend to try them. I just really like having the map on the screen and, and what you can do with that map. Um, so. Yeah, you would lose some stuff, but I'm sure. Certainly, a couple of the boss fights, it can be a bit fiddly when you're firing tons of Pikmin into them because you're obviously, there's one where you have to be like running away but firing Pikmin behind you, and you can't really do that because you're using the same stick to move and aim your cursor. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I could tell that with a with a Wiimote and Nunchuck would be much better, but I still did it. It wasn't a massive problem. But, um, yeah, just top, top stuff really really good and what i'm hoping this will be the catalyst for the wii u it's not going to be the game that saves the wii u it's not going to be the game that everybody suddenly decides oh i need to buy a wii u now you know it just isn't it's pikmin 3 it's not i don't think any one game could do that maybe a brand new zelda maybe but not even that i don't know but hopefully this will be the catalyst that i think for now every month until the end of the year there's one big wii u game coming out i think there's this then wonderful 101s in august that's right isn't it yeah that's right yeah um september you've got the best version probably the best version of rayman um is is september october's wind waker bit of a stretch there and then i think you've got november's donkey kong and december is mario so if you can get that level of consistency where one big mostly first party or second party game is coming out every month it could start to get that momentum that the 3ds currently has where yeah. you can't go three weeks without something big coming from nintendo or one of their or one of their second parties that's basically been the whole way since since luigi came out isn't it in february yeah that's been uh that's been how the 3ds has been this year so if they can get that then people will will start to take notice if there's a consistent 9 out of 10 game coming out on that every single month and the thing costs less than 200 quid yeah. so I don't think it's dead and buried yet but the, uh, this could be the game that kicks it off yeah damn I can't wait for it what are you going to give it out of 10? Um, oh yeah it's got a 9 out of 10 nice in, in my review on uh, Video Gamer which should be up uh, at the same time as this video if you're watching the video and if you're not watching the video and listening on the podcast go and check it out on Video Gamer anyway but yeah, uh, one of the definitely one of the best games I've played this year. Not up there with the very best games I've played this year because it's been a special year, but fucking great. Just it's, it's very hard to fault. And nasty as well. Just difficult. No, I mean, it's, it's tricky, but just like it's genuinely gruesome at times. Be it the, the, the harshness of losing Pikmin at the end of the day when you go back up into space and they're just left there stranded. Because there may be something to do with the fact the animation's better and it's clearer. And also, like, when you set, like, 60 Pikmin on an enemy and you just think, imagine that happening to you. 
I, I don't know, like the creepy crawlies and stuff bug me out. <laughs> but just that's the what a way to go. All these little fucking red fuckers just jumping on you to the point where you can't move and you're trying to shake them off, but they keep coming until you just die. And then they carry your corpse back to their spaceship to get more Pikmin. <laughs> what scumbags. Yeah. Oh, no, I can't. I mean, the thing the thing about Pikmin 3 that I remember is that, that they've individually animated them, whereas before they, was, they were just a sea of things. Um, but right. they they each looked like they had individual faces when I played Pikmin Three, and it, it made all the difference to mm. sort of making you empathise with them. And it is it is gutting when you see their little ah, those little yeah. souls go. You just like, no, yeah, losing them. Yeah, so I know what you mean. But God, yeah, goddamn, I can't wait. I really cannot wait. It's a, it's a very special game. Miyamoto said it's the like his best game in a long time or something like that. I haven't quite finished it yet, but it's definitely the best. Nintendo game, I think, since since Galaxy 2, and that includes 3DS stuff. 